trying to sneak away in, but you want every opportunity that you can. Oh, good fighters, great fights. That's the mantra over at Box TV. We are Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. We don't promote boxers, we promote the sport of boxing. And tonight, we come to you from Mexico City, driven by our founding partner, Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions. This is Pro Box TV's Wednesday Night Fights. Our main event of the evening is scheduled for 10 rounds in the super bantamweight division. El Azteca, Brian Rivera, whose style is pretty straightforward. Volume, pressure, and aggression faces off against a man who has fought here on Pro Box TV before, Alejandro Gonzalez. And he tells us to be effective tonight. He needs to get on the inside and land power shots. We welcome you inside to Auditorio Blackberry in Mexico City, Mexico, as we get set for a trio of fights that we guarantee will be entertaining. And Juan Manuel Marquez, when he goes to Mexico City and he has a promotion, things happen very nicely. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, joined by my partners, of course, my powerful partner, the Magic Man, the two-time world champion, Paul DiMolinaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Chris, I want to start with you on Brian Rivera because he told us, and I quote, he's a man on a mission. What is that mission? Well, I mean, he's he's coming off a very close win against Odin Baez after a two-fight slide. So he's trying to stick, get another win here and keep a win streak alive. On top of that, he is a power puncher. The kid is in no is in a rush to get out of there. He does not think about getting paid for overtime. So he's going in there looking to, to land big bombs. He's got nine KOs in his 11 wings. So you know knockouts on his mind. Knockout on his mind. And, and seek and destroy is, is something that you talked to me earlier about when you talk about Rivera. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's going out there to put hands on you. He likes, he loves the left hook, especially to the head. He's got a big sweeping shot. He's got good power. Um, he's had great knockouts in, in his career. I, I watched a ton of tape of him. And he's, he's a talented kid, and, and he has power. So um, I think he's going to go out there, and he's going he's gonna to look to start, start the firefight very early. And Magic Man, the rabbit is back. We saw him in Cancun. <laughs> we see him again tonight, Alejandro Gonzalez. El Conejo Gonzalez. The rapid as it's uh, as, uh, translated into English. You know, he's a guy who, you know, has had some hard luck in his career. He's always been very capable. We saw him in Cancun in September, and I thought he got robbed against the undefeated prospect he fought back in September. A very nifty, crafty guy, knows how to make you look bad, and he, honestly, he knows how to win the fights. He just hasn't, you know, he's been sporting the B-side, and a lot of times he doesn't get those close decisions. I got to be honest, he might be in a position again tonight where he might be on the short end of a close decision or whatnot. I know his opponent is a big puncher, but this guy's not that easy to take out, and he's not that easy to look good against so he will look to get the decision to go in his favor this time and, and you're right because you well, and i talked about that a lot that was a crazy night listen he's a mexican he's gonna try to get his get the knockout if he can <laughs> that's how they fight over there but yeah, i'm just telling you he's a crafty guy he's not gonna be the easiest guy to take out for his opponent either yeah he was very entertaining when we had an opportunity to call his fight in cancun last year now our co-main event of the evening slated for you here on our wednesday night fights tonight from mexico city is an eight rounder in the junior flyweight weight division, 19-year-old Francisco Araujo had a six-week training camp in Hicapilco, Mexico, 8,700 feet above sea level. So the altitude in Mexico City shouldn't be a factor, but the crowd will be because Magnifico, 24-year-old Ivan Garcia, born and raised in Mexico City. He wants to put on a show, Chris, for the hometown crowd. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's going to have to get inside. Araujo is, uh, is a shorter guy. His nickname is La Polga. He's always the tick. Um, you know, but he's a, he's a fan favorite. You mentioned, you know, he was training at altitude. He only had three weeks' notice for this fight. But he said he's been training at altitude, so you know he's going to be in shape. And that's the one thing about Mexico City that people need to consider is altitude, Paulie. Yeah, yeah. Even last minute, he's up there in altitude anyway. So he, he, Mexico City altitude is not going to affect him the way it would somebody else. No question about it. All right, so we will get things started, though, with the good one. And in fact, we think it'll be a good one because we have a 7-0 and fighter, young fighter in Jesus Mauricio Estrada. Four wins have come by finish, and he's taking on Labor Lopez, whose nickname is El Showman. He is a showman, and he promises 
all of us that he is going to put on a show to get things started. Six rounds in the super lightweight division. Estrada, 7-0, and just 20 years old. We love these young fighters. Yeah, and a chance to open up the show, na national, international TV. You know, it's, it's the opportunity every young fighter wants. And these guys, 20 years old and 23 years old, it's exactly where they want to be. It's a perfect chance to show their stuff. Yeah, Lopez is the old guy, Chris. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> old guy on this card. <laughs> these guys are so young. But no, he's looking to put on a show. He said, he said in the fighter meetings yesterday, he's like, I'm going to go right after him. I'm, I'm, I'm a showman. I'd like to put on a, I'd like to put on a performance. And uh, he's going to go in there. I'm sure he's going to go for it. So we will look forward to get that one started as we set it up with our tale of the tape for our first fight from Mexico City. Six rounds in the super lightweight division. Jesus Mauricio Estrada, Labor Lopez. We talked about the ages. You see just a little taller is Estrada. He will also have a two-inch reach advantage. They both weighed in at exactly 140 pounds. One month to prepare for Estrada, for Lopez. He said he's been in camp for the past three months. He is 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. one of his victories has come by knockout. Now, this is a fight that was supposed to happen back in December of last year. So, Paulie, I'm sure Lopez is excited that it is happening tonight against Estrada. A lot of times those, uh, you know, four, six-round type of fights, if they fall through, they don't usually get remade. This one's, this one's been on the cards for a while, so they've got plenty of time. To, they've had plenty of time to prepare for one another. Keys to victory for Lopez, Paulie. Lopez has got to jab his way in. You know, he's fighting. Uh, he's, uh, he's the shorter man, so he's got to get his way in and not be reckless on the way in. Use the shorter punches once he gets inside, but first he's got to get inside using that jab. And, of course, come up and under with those hooks to the head. His opponent is Jesus Mauricio Estrada. As I mentioned, he is unbeaten in his young professional career, coming off a TKO win, two minutes and 31 seconds into round number one against Alexis Gomez. Great opportunity to showcase his skills tonight, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Young guy, you know, he, 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 likes, to, he likes to perform as well. You know, he's not a one-punch puncher, punch, not KO guy, but he's, he throws in volume. But as you can see, he's very tall for the weight class. Long reach, 74 inches is very, very long and tall for a 140 pounder. So using his height and reach from the outside is going to be really important in this fight. Also, he has a tendency to punch wide on the inside and leave himself open, stands tall and get hit. So he needs to make sure that he doesn't do that. And then once he throws that left hook, he's got to finish with the right hand. Chopping punches are going to work really well against a shorter opponent. So at 140, they will meet as we get things started with Estrada and Lopez, and we send it to Mexico City. Vamos y caballeros, Marquez Promotion, Chiquita González Boxing, a través de Probox TV, su fundador Gary Conas, presenta desde la Ciudad de México, Auditorio TV, Función de Boxeo. Y no podemos comenzar sin aplauso fuerte de todos ustedes para los boxeadores que participan en esta gran función de boxeo. Nada más que nos tenemos como jueces para esta pelea a Julio Ortega, Humberto Olivares y Héctor Mendiola. Tercero en la superficie, el profesor Laurentino Ramírez Oropesa. Nada más y caballeros, tenemos a continuación en la división de peso. Super Welter. Pelea pactada a seis rounds. Presentamos primeramente en la esquina roja con 63 kilos 700 gramos de la Ciudad de México. Tenemos a Jesús Demoledor Estrada. Presentamos en la esquina contraria de calzoncillo color blanco con un peso de 63 kilos con 700 gramos del estado de Oaxaca. Tenemos a Labor Showman López. Tercero en la superficie, Laurentino Ramírez Oro Pesa. Pegarse en la nuca, la espalda y los riñones abajo del cinturón. A la voz de fuera se separan sin tirar golpes. Saludos, que gane el mejor. Licenciado. Licenciado. Mexico City, Mexico. 7 and 0, 20 year old Jesús Mauricio Estrada. Ready to take out the showman. Labor Lopez.
Folks, here we go. It's time to fight. Black and white trunks for Estrada. White and blue trunks for 23-year-old Labor Lopez. This one's scheduled for six. Estrada came out right away with that hook. Yeah, I think he's gonna have a lot of success if he can put the right hand on the end of that hook. Already you can see Lopez moving to that side. He's moving to his left constantly, right into the right hand of Estrada. Here you talked about the big frame of Estrada as well. Very tall for the weight class. And Chris and Paulie, that's one thing we want to see if he takes advantage of tonight. He's, it's a couple inches of reach, couple inches of height, but this way, Paulie, it can make a big difference. I'll tell you what's going to make a big difference, too. If he lands one of those big shots, he's loading up a lot. Uh, Lopez already, I saw, he tends to go straight back up high as he just did there again. He's got to be careful because Estrada's a big guy and he can reach him when he's pulling back like that. Estrada coming off back-to-back -back finishes. We mentioned the one against Alexis Gomez. That was in the first round in his last fight. Actually finished his previous opponent back in September in round six. Midway through the sixth and final round. This is round number one. Champ, you mentioned it. Lopez keeps picking his chin up in the air, getting very tall. That's not going to be a, a good look against a taller guy who's got some. Yeah, like Estrada. Yeah, and he goes uh, straight back a lot, too. One thing Estrada could probably adjust a little bit. He's actually turning southpaw now. We're going to that backhand, maybe throw it straight. He's starting to, he arcs it a lot when he throws it over the top. But with the guy who's pulling back, if he throws it straight, you probably reach him a little better. Lopez, after back to back losses, a couple of years ago, took a year off from the sport and has since returned and had some success. He's coming off a unanimous decision victory, had a setback or two prior to that, but wants to take advantage of this one, and that's a nice right that just connected by Estrada. He's switching that stance again, Chris. Oh, yeah. He's, he's having a lot of success finding that right hand now. He was looking for it early, was coming up just short, but now he's putting it in the right position and landing it well. Paulie really trying to come over the top, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and you know, that over the top shot when he arcs it, he's a little short because, you know, he's throwing it from too far away, and, 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 and Lopez is able to get away with pulling back when he does that. So if he's gonna throw it from that far away, he's better off throwing it straight. If he's gonna be a little closer, there goes with a straight shot there. If he's gonna be a little closer, then he can arc it when, when and, and catch Lopez pulling back, but throwing just from just far away, so that straight shot like he used a few seconds ago will probably work better if he's gonna throw it from that far away. Oh, good shot there from Lopez. Yeah, Lopez is, is game, though. He's, he's, he's here to fight. Well, he was full of confidence in the fighter meetings yeah. yesterday. He was very, very uh, aware of what this was, this opportunity was, and he wanted to make maximize that. Much to his moniker, Chris, he said, I come forward and I like to put on a show. That's why I'm the showman. He got caught at the end of the round, though. Yeah, you know, when you're young, you, know, you, 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 when you're young, you don't really know the danger. You just kind of go for it. You know, you're young, dumb, and full of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> confidence. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. <laughs> Nice opening round between these two young guys. It's they've uh, they're not having trouble finding each other. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it, 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 it's that's the kind of fights we want to put on here on Pro Box TV. You know, it's uh, your boxing channel and for all your fans at home. Uh, whether they're big fights or smaller fights, you know, we're, uh, we we look for the action. We look for them to match the styles that are going to give you guys at home fun fights to watch. Good fighters in great fights. Yep. And as you guys mentioned, Lopez has come to fight. That round definitely towards the red corner and Estrada. But Lopez got a couple of good shots in. Yeah, you know, Estrada may have won the round, but he's, he's not exactly Parna Whitaker in there defensively. <laughs> you, you, can, you can hit him. And so if Lopez uh, gets his hands off a little bit, you know, he, he we've seen him make some good contact as well in the second half of the round. Round number two, Estrada in the black and white trunks, 20 years old, 7-0. Four wins by knockout Lopez in the white and blue trunks. Yeah, you see that height and reach for Estrada. Five foot 11, 74 inch reach for a super lightweight. Very tall and long. The weight class. The weight class that Paul and I both fought in. He's bigger than both of us. Nice jab there. He had a couple stiff jabs that landed also, Paulie, in round number one. Yeah, he, he throws his shots with some main intention. You know, he just has to find the, the right distance. He can be a little bit more accurate. Because, you know, Lopez's defense is a little less counter. Like, that awkwardness. And again, you see, he threw that overhand right from too far away. Very lands 
the hook, though. Yeah. Lopez is just defensively just inept. He's, he's all over the place, he, but he makes you miss almost by accident. And then he'll throw a shot. <laughs> but like there, right there, a few seconds ago, you saw Strata yeah. throw yeah. too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lopez kind of put yeah. back yeah. counter with yeah. Yoka. You know, he just, he just reacts yeah. really. Uh, yeah. It's not really rehearsed, uh, his defense. really trained that well. Yeah, I don't think he's thinking ahead too much. Like you said, Paulie, he's just, he's reacting. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he, he's not really going strike me as a kind of fighter with a much of a which, you know, can be fun to entertain when you're watching. He certainly didn't show up to lose the fight. You know, he be 3-3, three and, three, and he's fighting an undefeated guy. But he's, 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 he's game, despite uh, being probably being behind the scorecards. He's got good shots. That's the nickname. The showman. The showman. Yep. And this fight, as I mentioned earlier, was supposed to happen a couple of months ago. So both of these young men have been in camp. They are prepared. And Estrada lives. He's born and raised in Mexico City. So fighting in front of the hometown fans tonight. Approaching the final minute of round number two. Super lightweight bout gets us started on our Wednesday night fights on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. This one's scheduled for six. Good body shot, yeah. Sétalo, sétalo, sétalo. Boxeo! Alto, alto. Strata definitely has the, the advantage in the power punch department. You can tell this punch is having more of an effect on Lopez than vice versa. Yeah, good snap. You hear them. I mean, uh, a lot of times, you know, Lopez is, is, is fundamentally, uh, you know, flawed, so he doesn't get as much leverage on his shots as he probably could. He's keen, though. He's still, he's still bringing it to him. Well, Lopez was anxious to fight tonight, Paulie, as he eats a body shot there late in the round because he also had a fight scheduled last month that was postponed. So Lopez wants to make the most of this opportunity as Estrada clips him right near the end of the round. And that was one of the things we spoke about in the keys to victory was Estrada finishing with the right hand at the left, after the left hook. I mean, he can't miss when he throws that combination. Not only miss, Chris, but over commits so much that he leaves himself wide open for Lopez to score. Yeah, I mean both these guys are, are over committing. They're they're like like Paulie said, they're they're young and they're they're ambitious and they're they're going for it, but it leaves a lot of holes. Roberto Conseco in the corner of Labor Lopez. You see that? See, you're gonna see Estrada throw that right overhand right from too far away. You see uh, Lopez actually able to kind of pull back and counter with the uppercut, and then a nice short left hook right hand what this? by Estrada as Lopez walks right into it. Lopez nods in approval. <laughs> Is that right? You got me. But he's, but he's like I said, we said he's, he's a gamer. He's still showing up and, and uh, coming forward and looking for the fight every single round so far. Yeah, it's almost like the more he gets hit, the more confident he gets that he can take the shot, and he's willing to take more risks. Four knockouts in seven fights for Estrada, so he does have power in his punches, but he's not always looking for the knockout. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Pauli Molinaggi here on a Wednesday night, Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Tonight, our fights are coming to you from Mexico City in association with our founding partner, Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions. You know, Estrada could make this a much easier night by doing what he's doing right here, fighting from the outside, using a little push and pull, so Lopez throws, over commits, is off balance, and counters exactly like that. And he told us earlier in the week, Chris, also that he considers himself a counter puncher. Yeah, we haven't seen that much thus far in this fight until that last uh, combination right there, but he, he does have some skills. He's fundamentally the better fighter. Yeah, he just, you know, when he leads, if he's a counter puncher, you know, when he leads, he's, he's throwing from too far away. Most of the shots Estrada gets off are from too far away. I mean, you know, the times that he's landing, is from Lopez, yeah, yeah, times, you know, but if, if, Lopez, if Estrada could understand his range a little bit better, I tell you, he'd have much more success in the fight. He's, he's, he's winning the fight. I'm just telling you, he, he could actually look better and, and be even more accurate. Connected with the body shot there. Paulie, with, with a guy so tall in this division, I know he's young and he's developing, he's evolving, but but how do you get disciplined in finding that proper range? I mean, you know, it comes from training in the gym, you know, different sparring, you work on it on the pads on, on, and things like that. You know, you're on the, you have to, you're on the, we all have our, our range and our distance we like to fight at, you know, and, 
and he seems to be a, a boxer who likes to go up beyond the back foot and box a little bit. He likes to throw his hands, his hands hard, like right there. When he throws them, he throws them with mean, with mean intentions. But you know, he, he, there's certain things that he does that he, he could probably clean it up a little bit. I, I would say, you know, nice shot there. Uh, especially when he's throwing that overhand right from five miles away. I mean, yeah, I don't know if he's landed even one yet. No, I don't think either one has landed the overhand right. Although they've, they've thrown a ton. And if he turns that shoulder, Hello. that 74 inch reach becomes about 76 or 77. He does like to go to the body, I notice here and there. And a couple of times he's landed some, he's gotten some good leverage on some good body shots. Hasn't deterred Lopez's pressure. The Lopez has been coming forward the whole time. As you see, Estrada looked for the hook to the body again there. Estrada switching his stance back and forth once again. Punch landed by Lopez in the final 30 seconds. Midway point of this fight, round number three. <laughs> saw that awkwardness from Lopez there, yeah. but it was successful. He, he went he went low a few shots and then he went upstairs. He caught Estrada with a nice overhand right on the inside, but then misses widely with the hook and almost falls over. Again to the body. And a strong finish by Lopez. Hey, tranquilo, limpio. Lopez doesn't have to back Estrada into the corner. He backs himself into the corner. Yeah, Estrada, you know, he doesn't mind fighting off the back foot. The, the funny thing about Lopez is, you know, he's bringing the pressure. And I don't really know that Estrada's setting him up for anything. It's more, though, as Lopez is just giving him the shots. He's walking into them, you know, and Lopez, you know, Estrada doesn't really, because if you notice when Estrada has a throw and create his own distance, he, he throws him too far away. He doesn't really not understand his distance very well. He's got some flaws for an undefeated fighter, but, you know, Lopez almost steps into his distance and doesn't disguise it. When you, you know, we call that walking in the front door. You walk into the front door with, without disguising it, you know, the guy's is not going to have a hard time finding you. Estrada with that right hand. Landed it here. Here we see, yeah, what Estrada with that counter right hand, bouncing gonna... off the ropes, landing a straight right hand, just like Paulie was saying. When he straightens that thing out, it rarely misses. And here we see Lopez setting up, going down to the body what? first, looking down and punching up, and landing a nice shot upstairs. Trying to be deceptive though, Lopez. Yeah, it's a little tricky. <laughs> Trying to put on a show. Round number four, our first of three fights from Mexico City. Estrada on the black and white, he is unbeaten. He's just 20 years old. Lopez, 3-3-1, three, three and one, one of his victories. He has finished his opponent. No clash of heads on the inside. As Lopez was reaching for that right hand around the stomach area. He's going with his head. I love when you see these deceiving guys with the records of 3-3-1, three, three and one, but they can actually fight. And these young undefeated guys are pushed just a little bit. Hey, you know what it is? A lot of, a lot of them, they're, they're not the, the best fundamental fighters when you see guys like this, but you know where, where they become tough? They, they, they don't take no for an answer. Right. They show up to fight each and every time, and suddenly, you know, because they're mentally in the fight so much, they're forcing you, your prospect to work a little harder. Yes, and, you know, this. if he's not of the level, he'll get beat, but even if he's of the level, he'll have to be tested a little bit. Good body shot there from Estrada. Digs again. Nice combination there. That's something that I saw when I was doing my, my tape review for, for Estrada. When he when he does catch you and he does have you hurt a little bit, he really lets his hands go and tries to force a stoppage. Good combination by Lopez. And much to your point with the record, the setbacks for Lopez have been against two unbeaten fighters and another fighter at 140 who had 11 wins at the time was 11-4-1, so much more experienced than Labor Lopez. And so he has been, he has probably been tested more at this point in his career, both of them with seven fights as professionals, although Lopez three years the elder of Estrada. And you know what's really important, Lopez, he doesn't have the mentality or the body language of a loser. He's here to win the fight. He's, he's trying with all the skill set that he has, as limited as it is. And he's bounced back and forth in different weight classes as well, Chris. Yeah, he spoke about that in the fighter meeting yesterday, yeah. that he, he making 135 was just too tough for him. And uh, moving up, he feels a lot better now at 140. Actually, even fought at 154, which at his size, at 5'9", that's, that's a tall task, or he may not be tall enough for that task. But he is coming off a win at 154, a unanimous decision victory. 30 seconds left in this one. A starter back to Southpaw for a moment. He's getting nippy in there. Yeah. See a couple of headbutts in there, a couple of turns in there. And that's what I meant by the mentality and the body language. He's, he's not a loser. He's not in there just to, to 
to you know, get walked over. Ooh, good shot. Shut up. <laughs> Follows it oh, shot. there's that right hand. Finally landed that overhand right, found the range. And you're right, Paul, it's always when Lopez is coming forward. Estrada does not move forward with his range well. Not yet, he's there, he's a himself. All right, let's go back to our keys to victory, and we'll begin with Jesus Mauricio Estrada Pauli. Yeah, don't punch so wide in the close exchanges. Um, I don't think, really think that's happened very much. He's had some luck, and he, he's landed some shots. He's had some success, but he's definitely, for me, he punches too wide in general. Uh, be sure to finish with left hooks and right hands. He does do that. He, he enjoys throwing the left hook in the right hand. He's, uh, of course, I, I do think as he goes up the ladder as a prospect, if he doesn't start shortening those up, he's going to be paying for throwing those right hands and those hooks. You know, he's not against an, an, in and against an opponent who's going to make him pay too hard right now for throwing them so wide. So he's getting them off pretty well. And for Lopez, Chris? You know, jab your way in with the taller man. He has not been doing that. He's really just been falling in and throwing punches from too far away. Use short punches on the inside. Hasn't really been doing that either, which is why I have him down, uh, getting getting shut out at this point. And then come up with hooks to the head. He's this? done that a little bit and had a little bit of success, but he did better when he actually punched the body first and then worked his way up. Like you're looking for short punches. This wasn't the fight to watch. No, I yeah, yeah. what it is. They're both guys who go for it, and they're both guys who have given the punch count up, and they've both been trying to make heavy, heavy contact with each other, regardless of how they're throwing the shots. So scorecard as we enter round number five, Pauly. Uh, for me, it's a shout-out. I mean, it's, it's not a, you know, Lopez is one of those guys who's been competitive. He's he's making a try to work for the win. Um, and he's, he's reactive every single time, but he's not as good. And every round, he's a little, comes up a little short. I got the same scorecard, 40-36 for Estrada. So two and a half minutes left in round number five. This one scheduled for six. And Lopez trying to push the pace here early. It's one of those fights where, you know, you, you know Estrada came in with the undefeated record. He's the prospect. But certainly this fight against Lopez has shown us that, you know, there's various things Estrada needs to work on. And this is the kind of opponent that you get so that, you know, maybe he's not going to beat you, but he'll sort of show you uh, and bring out the errors you want to work on in the gym. And, and uh, despite I have Estrada up, he makes plenty of errors. And one punch we have not seen much from Estrada, although we saw three or four of them just now, was the jab from Estrada. When he does throw it, it's highly effective and, and hard. He has a good, hard, stiff jab. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, Jim. You know, he, he doesn't use it as often as he should, especially for the height that he has. And especially for a guy who fights going backwards, you know? Right. He, he, usually you see guys, you know, they're, they're backing up and, you know, they use that jab and went backing up. Well, yo, you keep mentioning his range. He's not really good at finding his own range. If he had a jab behind it and used that as a range finder, yeah. I think he'd be a lot better off with those power shots. Yeah, that's a good point, too, exactly, because, you know, you can use that jab both in a stiff way and in a way where you're measuring, and especially with that height, you can stop measuring and touching a little bit, too. And both of these guys are certainly allergic to feints. <laughs> <laughs> big allergy to feints in this fight. Oh, the combination there by Estrada. Finishes with the left hook. And that's what I meant about, the, you know, fundamentally he's a better fighter. He, he cleans up the rough with the left hook. You know, he puts his punches together nicely when he does. He just needs to work on his balance. Yeah, you can definitely see the balance. And we saw a perfect example of that at the end of the last round where Estrada was almost falling over Chris into the ropes against Lopez because that range has been something that he's going to continue to work on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's it's funny. It's almost like he hasn't grown into his body yet. You know, he's tall, he's long, but he keeps falling over his feet. He doesn't know how tall he is yet. Like a, like a, oh, big shot to the body. That was one thing we was doing well. Yes, oh, he's hurt. That might be it. Oh, we are in Mexico. We're there we go. Say. Nice. Left hook to the body. <laughs> Left hook to the body, and it is all over. Jesus Mauricio Estrada. 8 and 0, oh, fifth finish in his young professional career. You're right, champ. When in doubt, you're in Mexico, take to the body. <laughs> And he folded Lopez immediately with that shot. And you know what it is, too? When you're throwing so many punches and you're guessing yourself out, just throwing and throwing and throwing, you take that body shot, it's even, it feels even worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> Lopez was going for it every single round, throwing shots, you know, giving the effort. That's when you don't want to get into the body. Oh, he looks like he could have took a 20 or a 30 count after that <laughs> shot. He's still down. <laughs> Oh, 
So he was up on the scorecards, but he gets himself another finish. And not kind of self-explanatory here. He's back. He, he goes here. Oh, nice little oh. throws that little uppercut with the right hand to kind of get the arms to come to the middle of Lopez. Watch again. You know, that, that uppercut. See what happens when he throws that uppercut? You're going to see Lopez's arms come inside. He almost, almost as a reaction to try to block it. A little showboat there with the body shot. Watch again. Right uppercut. Watch the arm. See how they close up and they open up the body shot. Nice little setup by Estrada. Something we talked about throughout the fight is, Chris, we weren't seeing a lot of setups from Estrada, but with the finish, he did exactly that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, we're alluding to what we were saying earlier. It's just like, he, once he got his feet and his range better, he, he was a much more effective puncher. There, he actually had his balance, he had his feet underneath him, and obviously, we saw that the power he was able to generate when he landed that shot. Good to see that Labor Lopez is going to be okay. Took that big shot, and it was set up nicely and just a little half step in a different angle from Estrada. Earns himself knockout number five and his third straight win in which he has finished his opponent. He has already defeated two unbeaten fighters. He moves to 8-0, getting things started for Mexico City tonight. We'll get it to Marlon Perez to make it official. Vamos, y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo oficial de esta pelea. A los dos minutos con 35 segundos, en el quinto round, el vencedor por knockout efectivo, Jesús el Demoledor Estrada. El aplauso fuerte para el vencedor, el Demoledor Estrada. El aplauso también se lo damos a Leiber López. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of his handiwork in this fifth round stoppage. Yeah, active fight fight by both guys. Neither guy was really shying away from the exchange. He saw Estrada was just a little bit better every time. Got better leverage on the shots. But Lopez, as you see, was game the whole time. Yeah, I think I, I, and, and as Lopez's confidence grew, I think it just left him more open to get hit with these big <laughs> shots from from uh, Estrada, who became more a, more of a counterpuncher, which he said in the fighter meeting as the fight wore on. Yeah, and, and Lopez wasn't wasn't scared to uh, give the credit either. You saw him to give a little nod when he threw, walked into the shot there, and then the body shot, champ. You know, great setup as we spoke about, uppercut and then right to the body. That was a beautifully placed shot, and there was no chance that he was going to make that before the ten count. So he remains unbeaten, and he earns himself another finish to get things started here on a Wednesday night on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV, with the magic man, Pauli Malignaggi, of course, the former world champion, Chris Algieri. The, the one thing that you guys had mentioned is he has not grown into his body yet, and we see that with young athletes a lot, Chris. I, I, my experience with hockey is all of a sudden these guys grow two or three inches and they don't skate. They don't do things the same way. And that might be the case for what we're seeing with 20-year-old Estrada. Yeah, absolutely. He's 20 years old. He's 5'11". He's got a 74-inch reach, fighting at 140. You know, he looks like he's he's actually filled in. He's not, like, super thin. So it, it could just be that, you know, he's he's not used to that body yet and he's got to get used to it. But as the fight wore on, it seemed like he got used to himself, got his balance better, got his feet underneath him, and he got that great knockout shot because he was on balance and was in the right range. Growth sports are good, Paulie, but you got to adjust to them. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that he's going to have to to learn too. Uh, from some things he may have learned from this fight is he's going to have to learn to find the range himself yeah. uh, when, and not just be waiting for the range to come to him. If you're going to set those traps on the back foot, you want to use your jab, you want to use those feints. Eventually he got the knockout, but the knockout also came to him the way the rest of the shots that he landed tonight came. It came to him. He didn't have to really go find it. He didn't have to set up the range. The, the range came to him. So as he goes up the ladder, I think he's going to have to learn uh, uh, and to adjust that range. And maybe, like you said, 
it is going into the body and whatnot. But either way, no matter what it is, if he doesn't find it, he's, he's going to eventually find the loss, find himself losing soon. Either way, he's got to find that jab. That's yeah. how, that's that's going to make him you know find that range that much quicker and be be more of an offensive fighter rather just a counter puncher. I mean, just to find the distance, just to set his feet properly, utilizing that jab. And when he did throw the couple of jabs that we saw, they were pretty stiff. He, yeah. he snapped Solid. the head of Lopez back. So he will continue to develop, but he remains unbeaten as we will continue here from Mexico City in, in two weeks. Wednesday night fights once again. February 22nd, we will be right here inside the Pro Box TV Event Center for our Wednesday night fights. In the main event, all-action Mexican Manuel Gallegos, 19-1 with 16 knockouts, faces undefeated 13-0 light heavyweight Richard the Vibes Van Sicklin, plus future stars Naji Lopez, Marcus Valle, and 2020 Olympian Daryl Blast Bell Saint are back for another hard hitting night of action live on Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote the sport of boxing. And as promised, and Paulie, you look spectacular in that picture, by the way. Man. Every other Wednesday, we are here. Yeah, yeah. We hope you, you know, we're, we're you guys are going to get to enjoy uh, all our shows this year. We're going to be active. We're going to bring it right to your living room right here at Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. And we saw some shots earlier on social media that were posted on Pro Box TV of Juan Manuel going home to Mexico. And you want to talk about always getting a hero's welcome? It, it was so fun, Chris, when Paulie and I were in Cancun and we got to witness it firsthand. I mean, beloved is an understatement when you talk about that man, Juan Manuel Marquez, the Hall of Famer. Well, it's absolutely deservedly so. I mean, he's he's a, a legend, a living legend, and the boxing community in, in Mexico City is as powerful as any. You know, they, they've got the best fans. They love their fighters. They love fighters from all countries. But, I mean, if, if they got a homegrown like, like Juan Manuel Marquez, I mean, of course, they're going to show that love. All right, so we move forward to an eight-round matchup in the junior flyweight division. Francisco Araujo, nine and one, six wins by knockout against Magnifico. Ivan Garcia. Ivan Garcia has eight wins. He has finished five of those victories. He got the call two weeks ago. He was waiting for the opportunity. He is the he, he's the hometown kid tonight. Ivan Garcia is, Paulie. And you are. You're going to wait by the phone, and when the phone rings, you're going to answer, and you're going to get in the ring as soon as possible. Well, he's that kind of guy, but of course, when they call you for the phone in the ring and it's in your hometown, it's always a little bit easier to take the fight. So he does. He's a veteran tough guy. His record speaks to that. 11 bouts, 38 rounds. Prior to this fight, he's been fighting around 112 pounds. He weighed in at 107, so a little lighter tonight, Chris. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that that helps. And with taking some of the shots, he has been stopped twice in his two losses. Yep. So you know, he doesn't he doesn't want to repeat that. Um, he wants to be, get in there and, and and use his height and his reach and, and experience to uh, to get the win tonight. He said he does not know his opponent Francisco Araujo personally, but he knows he's a warrior and he knows that he is a forward-moving fighter. So let's talk about Francisco, who had that six-week training camp at altitude in Hickapilco at 8,700 feet above sea level. That is some altitude training, Chris. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, 8,700, that is that is up there. That, that, that I mean, training there has got to be incredible. I mean, you're, you're going to be exhausted, but you're going to be ready. So if he's coming down in Mexico City, which is still elevated, not quite that high, but he's uh, he's going to be in great shape if he got six weeks up there. Mexico City's going to feel like Cancun for him tonight, right? I'll tell you, mile high ain't got nothing on him. <laughs> you got that right. And, and you know what? They talk about the altitude, and, and some people will dismiss it. Well, I'll take you back to a, an example in Mexico City, Mexico. It was a UFC heavyweight championship fight between Fabricio Verdum, and Cardio Kane Velasquez. Yep. Kane Velasquez, you remember, Chris. I do. He only went one week early. Verdum had been in Mexico City for two months. Cardio Kane gassed. So it's real in Mexico City, the altitude. So we will see if uh, Araujo being way up even higher than Mexico City, if his conditioning becomes a factor in this matchup. Scheduled for eight rounds in the junior flyweight division. There you see Magnifico, Ivan Garcia, veteran tough guy, I had mentioned that. He has fought for some regional belts. He has fought at 112. He is coming off a disappointing loss 
but against an unbeaten fighter in which he was stopped in round number three. And Chris, that snapped a three-fight win streak for him. Yeah, no, he, I mean, he's, I watch a lot of tape. I, I watch that fight as well. He does make a lot of mistakes in there. He, 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 he kind of poses after combinations and is there to get hit. Like I said, he's been stopped twice. And if he's going to... Be, to make it to the end of this fight, he's really got to maintain the distance. Uh, Araujo is, is, is very short. He comes in. He's a phenomenal body puncher. We potentially could see what we saw in fight number one with, with a, a knockout to the body. All right, so the keys to victory for Garcia. Ivan Garcia, he's got to stay low during exchanges. I said that he makes certain mistakes. That's one of them. He'll be trading with somebody. He'll get tall, allows himself to get hit. Don't admire your work. He throws good combinations, but then stays there for the receipt. He wants to get hit back. And then also, like I said, don't allow Araujo to walk in the front door. He's a much shorter man. He's a very good body puncher. He's going to come right at him and try and beat that body up. Francisco Araujo, just 19 years old, 9-1 and one with six finishes in his young career. Thankful for the opportunity to perform tonight on Wednesday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. His lone loss was against one of the best lower weight fighters of this era in Jesus Chiquito Ando for the WBC Youth World Minimum Weight title. So he has faced some pretty good competition early in his career, Pauly. Yeah, he sure has. And, and you know, I, I think he's going to come in with bringing that experience to the table tonight and, and, and looking to use that because he's taken the fight on only three weeks' notice. And so he's going to need to use that experience to uh, get the advantage. And here when you see the keys, use that jab to get on the inside. You know, he's the shorter man. He's going to want to get on the inside. Once inside, use that two-fisted attack. You know, uh, champ Chris Algieri mentioned that his fight, his opponent likes to, you know, stay out, kind of wait in and watch his work. If he's watching his work, it's an opportunity for Araujo to get in that two-fisted body attack. And, of course, pressure, pressure, pressure. You want to make sure you're getting inside from the outside and you're not going to really be able to be effective against a much taller guy. So this one is scheduled for eight rounds in the junior flyweight division. Our tale of the tape, 19-year-old Francisco Araujo, 5'3", so three inches shorter than his opponent, Ivan Garcia, who is 24 years old. You see this significant reach advantage for Garcia. Will he utilize it? And will it make a difference in this fight scheduled for eight? Official introductions from Marlon Perez. A continuación, damas y caballeros, en el peso pactado de los 51 kilogramos, pelea a ocho rounds. Presentamos primeramente de calzoncillo color blanco con un peso de 48 kilos con 700 gramos de la Ciudad de México. Ecatepec tenemos a Iván el Magnífico García. Presentamos en la esquina contraria de calzoncillo blanco con rosa con un peso de 49 kilos con 200 gramos. Él es originario de Acapulco, Guerrero. Radica, si no hacen Cancún de Panda Boxing, tenemos a Francisco Pulga. Tercero en la superficie, Alfredo Urusquieta. El punto rojo que está allá arribita. Ok, señores, vamos a hacer el recuento. Por favor, tengan mucho cuidado con las cabezas. Los golpes atrás de la nuca, abajo del cinturón y atrás de los riñones. Vuelvo a repetir, no los quiero perjudicar. Háganme una pelea limpia. Choquen los guantes, que ganen mejor. Humberto. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Paulie Malinaggi, set for fight number two. This one's scheduled for eight, Francisco Araujo and Ivan Garcia. It's time to fight. Francisco Araujo, just 19 years old. As I mentioned, he is in the pink and white trunks. White trunks for Magnifico, Ivan Garcia. You see that LP on the front of the trunks of Araujo, which is La Pulga, which means the tick. 
<laughs> Very interesting name. Makes sense with a short guy who wants to be on the inside, wants to stick to you. These guys south of the border have a lot of animal nicknames. <laughs> they do indeed. Yes, because we have the rabbits still to come in our main event, Paul. <laughs> taking the Kome and the rabbit in the main. <laughs> And not, not traditionally the toughest animals either, they think. <laughs> no. but, but I've seen, I've even seen pollo used a lot as well. Oh, that chicken, is true yeah, too, chicken. that is true too. Chicken, rabbit, tick, interesting names. We got it all covered. Then we got a showman and we have Ivan who considers himself magnificent. So let's see if he can be exactly that tonight. Impressive record for both young men, eight, two and one, nine and one. Yeah, but the similar amount of experience in 38 rounds for Garcia, Chris, and 43 for Araujo. Yeah, right away, you can, see, you can see the class of both these men. It's a very, very different level compared to the, our first fight. Yes. And ticks are annoying. And, and that's what Francisco <laughs> wants to be. He wants to get inside and be annoying. Yeah, he wants to get inside, but you know, so far Garcia's used his jab pretty well and has established his distance pretty well. Well, now he's not being active. I think, uh, you know, we need to start seeing our, our tick use some of that jab like we had, we mentioned is in his uh, keys to victory. Yeah, he's got to jab his way in and, and stick his head on, on Garcia's chest and dig that body. La Pulga is actually a very good body puncher for what I've seen from past tape. He digs with both hands really well. Definitely a local favorite at the lower weights. He has fought as low as 105. They weighed in at 107 Garcia, 108 Araujo for this one, scheduled for eight. Five inch reach advantage for Ivan Garcia. That was a good body shot by Araujo. Nice little combination return fire by Garcia. Yeah, good right hand from Garcia there. Much more technical fight than our first fight. And th this is a much more technical Garcia than I've seen in, in past uh, past fights. He's he's staying very composed early on. Taking this fight on two weeks' notice, but waiting for an opportunity. His last fight was in July of last year. He fought just one time in 2022. So he wants to get 2023 off to a great start. And getting past nine and one 19 year old Francisco Araujo would be a great start to 2023. Oh, nice overhand right there from La Pulga Araujo. Round one in the books. ¿Cómo lo sentiste? El único golpe con el que te agarró es que entraste caminando recto para enfrente. Ok, no te quiero, cuidado, no te, no, no te quiero, no te quiero caminando recto para ustedes. Quiero la cintura moviliza y la mano el jab, lo estás confundiendo. Aunque tú estés más chaparrito, lo estás confundiendo con el jab. Ok, hay que utilizar el jab. Más I see the blessed tattoo and I just think Max Holloway. Gira la cintura, cuando lo lleves a la cueva, ahí es donde hay que atacar. Pero con la mano bien subida. He's got some pretty dangerous hands as well. Ok, y él está largo. No lo, él no Gallo is probably one of, the, one of the better boxers in the UFC. Yes, in terms of his hand skills and his footwork. Always ready to be ready, is what Ivan Garcia told us during the fighter meetings. Ready to start round number two of this eight-round junior flyweight matchup, our co-main event, here on Wednesday Night Fights from Mexico City. Let's see if the tick can be more bothersome here, Paulie, in round two. Yeah, he's gonna have to close that gap. You know, I mean, it wasn't a very active round from either guy, but, you know, Garcia has the advantage of the height, so he can always just keep it uh, a jab press and, and uh, have the advantage. So, uh, Araujo has to work his way inside. He's gotta be a bit more crafty. And first of all, he's gonna just start using the jab in general. Still to come, our main event, Rivera and Gonzalez, super bantamweight matchup scheduled for 10 rounds. Second time we will see Gonzalez here on Pro Box TV. A little blow there. Yep. A little blow, but I think he pulled his head down. Yeah, he did. As well, but, uh, sometimes that's a result of that. Another thing you want to see how Raul do if he's not able to, gonna, to be able to do, we'll see that replay here. Yeah, you see his head getting yeah. pulled down. A lot of times that's what, that, what causes those low blows is the head getting pulled down. And where that shot landed, those shots hurt. That's in between the hip and the cup, and that's yeah. uh, that's that's a painful painful spot. So I, I understand the, the time being taken by Garcia there. Van dos veces. 
The referee's talking about two warnings. Yeah, and he, he, he got him low, he got him low in the first round as well. But you know what, Araujo, it's up to Araujo to actually tell him he's pushing my head down. If Araujo is not smart enough to say that, then it's on him if he ends up with two wait, warnings. Wait, 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 oh, wait, what's, wait. what's going on over here? A little slip? <laughs> a little slip. So, yeah, it's so like, what was that about? A low shot and a takedown in, in a little talk from the referee. One minute into round number two. Tick looks fired up. Yeah, yeah. And another thing he could do to close the gap if he's not going to be uh, busy with the jet, maybe cut off the ring, because, you know, uh, I've noticed Garcia's turning the, ring, the ring the same way all the time, so you, know, you could start to beat him to the spot and cut off the ring, but, of course, that hasn't existed thus far in Araujo's repertoire. But he, he's got to either start jabbing, cut off the ring, he's got to do something that's going to close that gap. Well, he's, he's just staying at the wrong distance. He's, yeah. he's staying just outside his own distance and just at the end of the punches of Garcia. That's exactly where Garcia would want him. Yeah, and, and if he's not going to jab, at least if he cl the, uh, cuts off the ring, the, the gap sort of starts, meet, to, yeah. he starts to, you know, it, Ooh. nice combination with Garcia. And then, like you said, champ, that's what, you can be at that distance, then that's what's going to happen. You're going to be at the mercy of those Garcia punches. That, that shook Araujo. He got hit with a right hand and a left hook, and you saw a little, little funky step afterwards. We, we used to call guys in the gym, guys like Araujo in the, in the gym, we used to take pictures. You know, they, they take a lot of pictures, a lot of posing, but yeah, not a lot of fighting. So the five inch reach advantage we're seeing being taken advantage of. And so it, it's not technically a tick, it's, it's a flea, Chris. <laughs> yes. Just, you know, I, I went on Spanish.com. But they're still annoying. Yeah, and also a flea tends to be pesky. Yeah, yeah. Pesky like a tick. He's not really, well, that tick will just take his time. And, <laughs> I feel like a flea is more pesky, but this guy, this guy, I feel like guy's more of a tick. I feel a like we're National Geographic. And also, uh, also, fleas can jump. I don't see him moving too much. Yes. You know, ticks, ticks are slower moving. He's, he's been more of a tick than a flea this yeah. fight. He needs to get into flea mode then, because right now, Magnifico is doing what on paper you would expect him to do, and that is stay long, keep Araujo at range, and Arao hasn't been able to find a way to get inside Paul. Yeah, and he hasn't really forced Garcia to have to make any adjustments. I mean, this fight can keep going like this, and, and, and Garcia will just, you know, win a quiet decision. It's, you're not putting him in a position to where he's got to make certain decisions. You're not asking questions of him to where, you know, he may have to do something in order to try to win the fight. You know, Garcia, Garcia if you give this to Garcia, if you don't make an adjustment and force him to fight, uh, Garcia will take this all night. And not for nothing, you know, we spoke about Garcia taking this fight on short notice. At this pace, it's not going to matter. Yeah, you, know, you don't need to be in great shape at the, with this kind of pace. He's, he's controlling the action from the outside. He has a taller man, and the guy's not pushing the action. So Yeah, uh, and you know what? Now he went from a, an eight-rounder to a six-rounder, and, and he's got two rounds in the bank. You know, it's Garcia. So, you know, it, it's now a, a six more rounds to go. He didn't burn any energy. So, you know, it's... Uh, it uh, became a six-rounder in his mind now. And he's from Mexico City, so no adjusting to the altitude and nice combination there. Yeah, that's that combination. Beautiful one, two, three, yeah. right down the middle. Landed all three punches. Fantastic combination. Great execution. And that was the punch that I believe rattled, that right hand rattled Araujo. Made him Whoa. take a little step on his heels. So Araujo definitely needs to try to do something differently. Or as you said, basically Garcia can cruise his way to a victory here tonight. Garcia in the white, Araujo in the pink and white trunks. Round three, Mike Goldberg, the magic man, Pauli Malinaji, the former two-time world champion, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Great to be here on Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote the sport of boxing. Stop! You know, and not to harp on the uh, taking the fight on short notice, but I don't know. I've, I took a couple fights on short notice early in my career, and it actually helped me. I had less time to kind of overtrain and overthink. And I, you know, if you're living in the gym at that at that stage of your career, you're training all the time anyway. You know, two weeks notice actually could be a good thing as long as you're in your weight. And that's not the first time I've heard a fighter say that, Chris. And, and Paulie, I'm sure you agree that. Sometimes too long, you, you push yourself and you deplete your body. You actually lose the fight before you even get a chance to fight. Yeah, yeah, it can happen. You know, there's a lot more thinking, a lot more strategizing when you have a long camp. Um, when, when you're in the gym, just training all the time and keeping in shape for whatever phone call, you, there's not really a lot of thinking. You just say, you know what, I'm ready, I can go. Also, it's a great help when you got an opponent who doesn't throw any punches. That's awesome. <laughs> no matter how you can take a fight on a week's notice. Yep. You know? 
You know, and I'm starting to notice also from Araujo is that he's starting to complain a lot, complain about a lot of things. And you guys only do that when they're uncomfortable and when they know they're losing. Mm -hmm. And he is losing so far. And they don't know how to make the adjustment. I mean, the times he's tried to get inside, he's ended up landing low shots. And he's been warned by the referee twice. You know, cutting off the ring can be a little bit tricky, can be a little bit complicated, but using a simple jab is not. Just, I mean, uh, uh, he can, the least he can do is uh, up, his, up the tempo with the jab. Garcia with a good right hand. You know, by cutting off the ring, you notice Garcia will, is, is always moving in the same direction. So he, he's actually not that difficult of a guy to cut off the ring against, because he's always moving to his left. Right here, he's coming forward with the combination, because he's getting a little confident. But nonetheless, he's, he's going back, and then when he, when he starts to move side to side, it's always to the left. So you just beat him by taking a step over to your right before he goes to his left. Suddenly now, you're forcing him to go in a direction where he doesn't want to go, because it's very obvious Garcia likes to fight going to his left. So what happens if you make him fight going to his right? Take a step over to your right, so that if he goes to the left, he's going to be walking to you, which he doesn't want to do. So now if he doesn't want to come to you and he wants to maintain that distance, he's going to have to step over to his right, and you're going to start forcing him to fight in a direction where he may not be as comfortable. Just, you know, small adjustments, things to do that you might want to try, since you're not going to do the simple thing like actually jab. Great analysis, Paul. And that's the, that's the, the Pauli School of Boxing right yes. there for you guys at home. That's the Nobel Prize version of Boxing 101 from the Magic Man. Nice little body shot down the inside by Raul. He snuck it in there. Yeah, he did. Gonna need to do a lot more of that if he's gonna change the tide of this fight. You can see from the body language and the movement of Garcia, his confidence is continuing to escalate as well. Yeah, and that's only going to help because, you know, you have those doubts in your mind. You go, oh, I've only had two weeks camp. You know, I'm fighting a, a, a local guy, a guy who's very, uh, very popular. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as the rounds go on, you're able to deal with someone who has much more experience than you and a, and a better record than you. Then that confidence is going to grow. Francisco Arrago. Almost another low blow. Here in that last round as he worked his way inside. Yeah, we mentioned whenever Araujo does get inside, he kind of smothers himself and tends to hit with low blows or headbutts. Or, uh, he's not being effective on the inside. As a smaller guy, it's so hard to get on the inside. Once you get there, once you get the real estate that you want, you've got to be effective. And Araujo has not done that tonight. And then there, his head didn't even get pushed down. Ivan Garcia kind of pointed, oh, saying he hit him at the leg. The referee started the round with a warning. Yeah, they didn't even hit him yet. <laughs> if you're thinking about another one, don't do it. I think the referee watched the replay. <laughs> there you go. I think the ref maybe doesn't want to take a point. Oh, nice combination by Garcia, similar to the one he had a couple of rounds ago. Yeah, that basic one, two, three. I'm last impressed round with Garcia and now, and, and now, Sorry, Chris, but last round and now the beginning of this, Garcia's starting to open up. Yeah, we talked about the confidence at the end of the last round. Like he, the body language is there, the confidence is there. A confident man's a dangerous man. And he's not posing. He, he's not taking pictures of his beautiful shots. There's another big complaint on me. Yeah. That wasn't even a knuckle turned over. I saw that. It was kind of like a slap in the back of the head. That's it's not going to hurt that badly. The glove wasn't even turned over. That was a it was hit him with the palm of the Yeah, I've been hit with cuffing shots that I like, pulled my neck and I felt like I strained. I want to see the replay here. No, that was just actually I didn't even hit him. Yeah, that was just a pop. <laughs> I should barely have yeah. I thought it would have been awesome tonight if, if Araujo would have showed up to fight. You know, that, that would have been even better, you know? <laughs> Definitely brought his that, bag of complaints. That's it, not a big shot at all. And he didn't throw any punches so far, and, and now he's complaining about everything uh, in between. Now he's making oh, he's looking for a way out. make like he died. Uh, you know, that's... I mean, that, that, that rabid punch, alleged, it, was, it didn't even barely land. It, it kind of just skimmed him from the neck. Maybe it's an elbow. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if we get another look at it, but I got to tell you. Yeah, take another look at it from this angle. See. He's going down too. He's ducking down as yeah. this is coming. So he, we elbow wouldn't have been able to. No, we definitely wasn't able to get him clean enough. I've not been inside those ropes, guys. So I, I'll let you guys obviously 
Tell me if that glancing see, blow did any damage. This angle, you could see, you would see as the impact hit, you'd be able to see his head move. I didn't really see that. Also, it didn't look like glancing. And also, and also if it was an, an elbow impact, oh. it, it, he wouldn't have been holding the back of his head because the elbow right. would have hit him on the side of the head. And the fight is over, and Ivan Garcia. Banco, Banco, Banco. A bit of a bizarre ending there. Yeah. Doctor came in. It was our fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Waved it off. And Garcia was. It's not good for a while, but it was starting to become entertaining to watch Garcia do his thing. He was starting to open up. Yeah, he was getting confident. You know, you take the fight on three weeks' notice, and then, you know, you, maybe you're trying to pace yourself a little bit early on, but then, you know, you know once you realize, okay, now we got enough rounds where I can actually work, he started to do that. He was confident. And we saw some of the nice work he was doing, nice combinations he was throwing. I was impressed with Garcia. He, he's improved tremendously from the fights that I'd watched leading up to this. I mean, he was very composed all night. He had a game plan. He stuck to it. He adjusted all the mistakes that I had seen in terms of standing tall on the inside, and, and, and posing after punching. He didn't do any of that tonight. And I know came in with a record of, uh, what was it, 9-1? 9-1, yeah. yeah. He, he, he Seven fought, knockouts. He fought like he was 1-9. Yeah. He fought like he didn't fight, he didn't fight to win at all. He didn't throw any punches, and he complained about every single thing he could. And then finally, when he looked and he found a little peek out of way, out of way out of the fight, he found a way out of the fight. Yeah, you know, we, we had mentioned that when you, start, when you start seeing a guy complaining about things, that you know he's uncomfortable, he doesn't really want to be there. That could have been the case. And Chris, when Paulie talked about he's got two rounds in the book, he's won both round one and round two. So now this fight's a six rounder, and you're a little less concerned about your cardio. That's when we saw Ivan Garcia start to open up. On top of that, just the confidence growing. You know, his body language is changing. He, he he saw that he could contend with a guy who had a much better record than him. Yes. He was coming in as the A side, and now you're beating him to the punch every round. As the rounds go, he was getting more. He was getting more bold and taking bigger, ch more chances. Like you were saying, it, we were starting to have a good fight here. We're starting to see see some some good things out of Garcia, and it probably would have gotten better. Garcia's two losses were both against unbeaten fighters. He was stopped in both of them, as you talked about, Chris, once in the fifth, once in the third, but they were both against top-level competition. So maybe that level of competition coming into this matchup as well, Paulie, was a factor in what we just saw. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're used to fighting in a high-level competition, you know, you're, you're – you just feel confident every time you get in the ring because you, you you feel like there's nothing that you haven't seen that you're going to see on, on, on any given night. And, and, and uh, we can see the confidence of Garcia going every single round despite having taken the fight on three weeks' notice. So Ivan Garcia moves to 9-2-1 and one. as he finishes Francisco Araujo. Looks fresh, looks like he could keep on going. Collecting the scorecards after the doctor stops the fight. So, Paulie, with the fights being in Mexico City, and we are here at ProBox TV World Headquarters in Tampa, they're going to the scorecards. The doctor waved it off, so perhaps they are going to the scorecards to see what officially will go down on BoxRec as the way in which Ivan Garcia has earned the victory. Yeah, I, I'm assuming it'll be a technical decision if they go to the scorecards. So. And you score the, the whatever happened in that, that last round, even yeah. though it was only you know, 30 seconds or a minute. And we were getting deep enough into the fight to have what exactly is happening right here, right now occur, and that is the judges' scorecards. Yeah, I mean, it would be a real shame if, if they were to take a victory, a potential victory away from Garcia, because he fought very well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really, I, couldn't, I can't see it being a no contest. What round was that? Four? That was four. Yeah, and it's, a, it's an eight-rounder. Possibly, you might have to go four rounds, I and mean, we'll see. It might have to be. I mean, I mean it should also, blatantly, if you look at the replay, it should be a TKO. He quit. He, yeah. he, he wasn't even hurt. That, that, that was not a foul. There was nothing to hit him. 
All right, we're going to find out. Marlon Perez with the official decision. Vamos, y caminos, tenemos el tiempo oficial de este encuentro a los 37 segundos en el cuarto round. El vencedor por nocaut técnico. El aplauso para Iván. They had to collect a lot of paper to come up with that TKO, didn't you they? What, they got it right. That, that was, uh, yeah, uh, even Paul, a, you said it. Even a technical decision would have been a shame. I mean, he would have won, but uh, I mean, that's a should be a TKO on his record. That guy quit. And he got the TKO, and it may have been something that was going to come not in that fashion but going to come more dramatically anyway chris yeah i mean like like we said the confidence in, in garcia was growing round after round here we see in the first round it was the only time that arajo threw punches was in the first round because after that nothing legal landed for the rest <laughs> of the fight from arajo who consistently was hitting his man low banging heads together and then it's funny that as the fight grew, grew, so did Garcia. He started coming forward, throwing combinations, landing almost at will, boxing beautifully going backward. And then here's the shot thrown by Garcia, not intentionally landing on the back of the head. And Araujo took to the ground, didn't want to fight. Referee's calling it there. A little bit of confusion about how the fight was going to be, how it was going to be called or scored, if it was going to be scored, but eventually the right decision was made and a technical knockout was scored for Garcia. Mike Goldberg, powerful partner, the Magic Man, the two-time world champion, Paulie Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Main event still to come, but I want to talk a little bit more about Ivan Garcia because Chris and you both, Paulie, brought up a great point. The confidence was growing. We were starting to see the skill set of Ivan Garcia. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I like, too? Uh, he's got a win over a guy now, 9-1. and one. It looks sparkly on his record, even though Araujo definitely shouldn't quit his day job because he's going nowhere with boxing with that kind of mentality. But nonetheless, he has a 9-1 and one record. And uh, when you beat a guy, when you're 8-2, you you're coming off a win over a guy with 9-1. and one. It's also confidence building. So it's a nice win. When somebody looks at your record and they're like, oh, wow, he's coming off a win over a guy 9-1. and one. You know, it, 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 it builds confidence for yourself, and it's a nice look to the boxing community as well and Chris both of the losses for Ivan Garcia were as I mentioned before against unbeaten fighters yeah and he was coming into this fight finding someone who would only lost to a very very good fighter and now he has a stoppage win over him and we you know, we alluded to the, the the short distance it took I mean the the uh, the uh, how quickly the fight came up you know they, they, they brought it up he took two weeks notice short notice fight it worked out really well for him yeah and he did utilize his reach advantage or Araujo could not figure it out but that really Really was the key and it it's interesting from the first fight where we saw the taller man not utilize all that length at least smoothly at this point of his career Garcia did exactly that, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, and, and he fought a very disciplined fight. It, again, it wasn't a, a difficult fight to fight in sure. a disciplined manner, but nonetheless, he took what was given to him, and he, and he, and he, and he took advantage of the fact that Araujo wasn't forcing the adjustments. And then Araujo looked for the way out. Yep. So our main event is still to come here on this Wednesday night and two weeks from tonight. On the 22nd of February, we will be here live inside the Pro Box TV Event Center. The main event features all action Mexican Manuel Gallegos, 19 and 1 with 16 knockouts. He takes on undefeated 13 and 0 light heavyweight Richard the Vibes Van Sicklin, who is back right here on Pro Box TV. Plus, future stars Najee Lopez, Marcus Valle, and the 2020 Haitian Olympian Daryl Blast Valsin are back for another hard hitting night of action right here on your boxing channel. Pro Box TV, where we don't promote boxers, we promote the sport of boxing. And we are definitely excited for the return of Najee Lopez because middle part of last year, Najee suffered a broken jaw. Cannot wait to see him in two weeks. Cannot wait to see the rabbit back here on Pro Box TV in our main event of the evening. This is 10 rounds in the Super Bantamweight division. Brian Rivera, 11 and three, nine of those wins by knockout. And Paulie, when we saw Gonzalez in Cancun, it was a fight that 
I think we all agreed was one that should have gone to the winning ledger. Yeah, yeah, you know, but he's a guy who's a hard luck kind of guy, you know, he's got yeah. a couple losses on his record that are like that, you know, where you get these guys, uh, the losses build on their records because nobody's taking care of them, and all of a sudden, they don't have such a sparkly, glossy record. He's got five losses on his record, and it can be deceiving, but then you start looking and watching him fight, you start seeing him on, him on video, and you start to think, wow, this guy is not only a good fighter, he's very, very crafty, and can make you look bad if you're not careful. And he has fought seven times since the pandemic. So inactive like much of the universe was. Now that that is in the rearview mirror, Gonzalez has been fighting, fighting, and fighting, which is perfect. Like the champ said, I mean, I, I put on the video and I watched him and I was like, wow, this guy has five losses. He's a very, very good fighter. Yeah. He's scrappy, he's explosive. And listen, inactivity is the worst issue that a young fighter can have. And Nick, you said, he's been active. Yeah. So, I mean, he's coming into this fight with a high upside and potential for an upset. Four fights last year, four fights in 2021 for Gonzalez as he enters the ring in Mexico City as we get set for our main event of the evening. He talked about his opponent in Brian Rivera. He said, we know each other. He said he knows that Brian is strong. He looks for the knockout. But no prediction coming from Alejandro Gonzalez, who said these styles will mesh very well, Pauline. We talked about that at the top of the show. Yeah, and I actually agree with him. You know, he's got a guy who's going to come right to him, and he's going to look to, you know, sort of in the Mexican firefight style. And uh, Gonzalez doesn't mind exchanging. He doesn't mind getting in there. But at the same time, like I said, he's crafty. He picks his shots well, and uh, he's a sharp counterpuncher on the inside. In a main event here on Pro Box TV once again, last time we saw him was in that fight against Christopher Lopez. Paulie keys a victory for the rabbit. Yeah, for a crafty guy, lead, lead hand, be, be busy with that. Obviously, you want to have that jab and lead hand uh, to control the distance and control, uh, you know, be where you want to be comfortable. Don't allow Rivera to walk him to the ropes. Gonzalez is crafty, but sometimes he's crafty off the ropes, uh, which can give a bad look to the judges, especially in Mexico, where a lot, a lot of times we see a lot of uh, credit is given just for pressure alone and use lateral movement and explosiveness that's how you stay off the ropes gonzalez has been a busy man as i mentioned fought in the uk the dominican republic panama mexico city back in mexico city tonight against this man brian rivera 11 and 3 back-to-back -back losses but he rebounded in october with a 10-round unanimous decision victory that last fight was his first 10-rounder Tonight, scheduled for 10 again, Chris. Yeah, no, he's going to try and keep that streak alive and get another win here tonight. You know, Rivera, he's a big puncher. You know, he's got nine KOs and 11 wins. So you know what he's coming He's coming with. He's coming with some real firepower. When it comes to the keys to victory tonight, he has a tendency to pull straight back with his hands down. He's 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 trying to be cute. He pulls straight back with a with someone like a Gonzalez, who's very crafty. He might be able to time that punch and anticipate to where he's going to be. He needs to be careful not to do that. Also, he needs to be patient. He likes action. He likes content, con, uh, contact. So sometimes he'll he'll kind of push the pace a little too much, get over his skis, so to speak, and get hit with shots he doesn't need to. And then his favorite punch is a left hook to the head, but he sets that up beautifully with a jab to the body. He likes to jab down low, use that stab jab to the belly, and then he fakes it and throws a hard left hook upstairs. He scored several knockouts in exactly that fashion. Been in training camp for three months. He said, my trainer, who you can see right there, Roberto Canseco, keeps me ready. Got the call about a month ago, and he is set to go in our main event of the evening with the official introductions. Once again, Marlon Perez. Damas y caballeros, tenemos a continuación el evento principal de la noche. Damas y caballeros, desde el auditorio BB Ciudad de México, Marques Promotion, Chiquita González Boxing, a través de Probox TV y su fundador Gary Jonas presentan el evento principal de la noche. A continuación, en la división de peso, Super Gallo, pelea pactada a 10 rounds. Vamos a presentar primeramente en la esquina azul con un peso de 53 kilos con 800 gramos con un historial de 13 peleas ganadas, dos perdidas, un empate, nueve de ellas ganadas por la vía de nocaut de la Ciudad de México. Tenemos a Alejandro Conejo.
Presentamos en la esquina contraria de calzoncillo color negro con un peso de 53 kilos con 800 gramos con un historial de 11 peleas ganadas, 3 perdidas, 9 de ellas ganadas por la vía de no caudamas y caballeros tenemos a Brian El Azteca Rivera. Tercero en la superficie, Alfredo Urusquieta. A punta de cámara, allá en el punto rojo de arriba. Ok, señores, vamos a las recomendaciones. Tengan mucho cuidado con las cabezas, los golpes atrás de la nuca, abajo del cinturón y atrás de los riñones. Quiero una pelea limpia. Por favor, vuelvo a repetir, no los quiero perjudicar. Toquen los guantes, yo los guarde, que ganen mejor. The evening, Rivera and Gonzalez, scheduled for 10 rounds in the super bantam weight division. 25-year-old Brian Rivera. A lot of stoppages, a lot of wins. Both men weighed in at exactly 119 pounds. Rivera, two years older, four inch reach advantage over Gonzalez, who has finished seven of his 12 career wins. Main event of the evening. Brian Rivera in the black and orange trunks, white and pink trunks for Alejandro Gonzalez. Good shot early. I think Dallas is hooking from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gonzalez is, is explosive. He likes to let those hooks go on the inside and the outside, obviously, right there. But, uh, When he jabs and sets those up, he's much more effective. Got to be careful. A nice little short uppercut hook counter by um, a little short hooker cut, should we call it, mid, mid, middle of the way shot. Hooker by, cut, I like that. By um, by uh, uh, Conejo, uh, off of the wide hook by Rivera, about 15 seconds ago, 10 seconds ago. Yeah, Azteca Rivera, he does tend to punch wide. He's got a long reach, but he likes to swing wide, wide hard shots from the outside. Sixth year as a professional for El Azteca, Brian Rivera. He has never fought outside of Mexico. Gonzalez has done some traveling. Main event scheduled for 10 rounds. And pushing forward is the rabbit. Nice shot to the body. Right hand down low to the left side and then a left hook down to the other side. Really good work there from Gonzalez. Yeah, no, one thing that impressed, oh, nice shot. This is going to be a good fight. I'll tell you, one thing that impressed me about Gonzalez back in September was his shot selection. And you're starting to see that here, too. You know, he really mixes his shots well. And it's hard to time once he gets his hands moving at close range. Now, Chad, the first thing I see is, is their, their body positioning. Look how far over. Azteca is over his front foot. He wants to engage. And you've got Gonzalez, who's a little bit more on that back foot, looking to counter, looking to pick his spots. Like you said, punch selection like that and set those shots up. Yeah, when a lot of times when you see a guy who's heavier on his front foot, he's usually looking for the hook. You know, the, yep. It's a hooker stance. He loves that lead left hook to the head. Oh, good start to this main event. Both men have landed. And, Pauly, since that fight that we called in Cancun, Gonzalez did rebound with a win in Mexico City back in November. Yeah, fourth fourth like round that. TKO, yeah. Yeah, you, sometimes you get a bad break like that, and, you know, you, 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 take a, you take your own break and you get frustrated. This guy was back in the ring a month later. Good way to forget about it is to get your arm raised in victory, right? Well, like you said, he's, uh, he's been active since the pandemic. Nice shot there. And these guys, you know, you mentioned that they know each other, right? So, limpio, limpio, fue la cabecita. Limpio, limpio. There hasn't been a feeling out around. They've been out there all each other with their knuckles. Yeah, and Gonzalez, is, his, his confidence is growing here. He's feeling like he can put boxeando, more pressure. Boxeando, boxeando, he can boxeando. Power. Big shot out there. Boxeando los dos, boxeando. Not to take those pictures. 10 segundos, señores. The, guy, the return from Rivera was nice off the ropes. Talked about that in the last fight, like Chris. Yeah, posing for pitchers. And yeah. that's one thing about, about yeah, Rivera is that he tends to get a little bit tall throwing those big shots, and he's there for the counter. In the corner of Rivera, his style's pretty straightforward, as we said at the top of the show. Volume, 
pressure and aggression, a man on a mission. Chris punches and bunches. Uh, the accumulation of damage has been the key to Rivera's success. Yeah, we haven't seen that much of that in the first round. He wasn't letting his hands go that much, probably because Gonzalez is doing such a good job selecting those those shots, hitting to the body. You know, he's a, he's a scrappy guy, Gonzalez. So Lopez can't just go for broke winging shots like he has with with less formidable or, or less formidable opponents. Yeah, you're gonna have to find your range with Gonzalez. He's crafty, as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, and I mentioned here uh, during the round, shot selection. He knows how to mix his range well. Uh, he's not the easiest guy to just. He, he's not just gonna walk up to him and punch him in the face. He's hittable because he likes he likes to fight himself. But he's a crafty guy. He's he's gonna fight 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 up. Good start to our main event, scheduled for 10 Sawa, rounds. Sawa. Brian Rivera, black and Sawa. orange trunks, white and pink, for Alejandro Gonzalez. You know, one thing I like in this matchup, although you know he's, he's got a four-inch reach deficit, Gonzalez, he's very explosive with his head movement firing from that, so he can get inside those long arms and be in a, in a better position to punch against a longer Rivera. Yeah, and he's a, he's a good timing fighter. You see, he's, he's reactive even when Rivera's punching. Oh, <laughs> big slam is there. I actually expected to see more of that from Rivera than from Gonzalez at this point. Nice combination. Rivera putting his hands together nicely. I think Gonzalez hurt Rivera. Buena, buena, buena. Yeah, I don't think a, a lot of the shots went into when Rivera was throwing the combination, but it's still a good move. He made it to ropes. So Gonzalez rolled well with the shots, and he got right back on. He might be right he's, he's been backing up a lot. This is that counter. Oh, he got a, I think he has a cut in the head. Oh, oh left hand lands for Rivera. And I wonder if that's a clash of heads or an elbow, because that's a weird place to be from a punch. Right? Yeah, generally don't get punch, get cuts on the forehead from punches. That Suma could have been Suma an accident of clash of heads. Oh, unless you're in BYB. Well, yeah, that's, that's true, too. <laughs> speaking, between, speaking between you guys calling this fight, you're, you're, you're going to get, you're you're gonna get cuts on everything. from the other night on you from, yeah. from that. Just, just being around, Chris. Yeah, what's your laundry? Bills like these days. <laughs> I don't dry know. Cleaning I, bills. The dry cleaner just gives us weird looks. Let's yeah. just say that. <laughs> what are you guys into? Yeah. Both guys a little fired up here in round number two. Might have been that clash of heads. Ref had to push him apart. A little, a little pop in the step of both fighters. I'll tell you what, both these guys started the fight fired up. There was no feeling out process in round one. They came out firing some good, sharp shots. Yeah, by the end of round one, we were looking at a good firefight. And I'm glad these guys picked it up in round number two. Yeah, one minute on the clock here in round number two. Finishing with that hook, starting with the jab on the next one. You know, the fighter meetings yesterday, Gonzalez uh, alluded to the fact that, that Rivera is a power puncher, and he's a very, very strong guy, and he has to fight cautiously. I'm not seeing that so much. It seems like he's like, you know what, I can take this power. I can be here. Good body shot. And that's a great thing to do against a, body, a, a, a good heavy puncher, is to hit the body, sap that energy, sap that power out of them. Oh, good uppercut on the inside. I'll tell you, Gonzalez, very, very good, man. I, uh, yeah, he looks sharp tonight, doesn't he, Paulie? I enjoyed watching him uh, in, 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 um, in uh, Mexico in September, and uh, I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying him so far here, man. Rivera has now switched southpaw. Can't imagine that that's a good sign. Obviously, he's feeling uncomfortable fighting from his, his orthodox traditional stance, and now he's switched up. And he considers himself a very technical fighter. So for him to switch up means there there might be a little bit of a panic button being pushed here at the end of round two. Yeah, he said he was a technical fighter before. When I watched for tapes, I didn't see that. I saw, I saw a back banger and a, and a, and a wide puncher. Um, I, I was you saw the seek and destroy. Yeah, I saw seek and destroy. I did, I did not see a, a technical a technical boxer. You're a technical boxer until you're in with a technical boxer. Boxing. Yeah, you realize you're not a technical boxer. <laughs> like I always say, you don't know until you don't you don't know. Right. You don't know when you don't know. Technically, we're gonna brawl <laughs> <laughs> until the opponent is so technical that he won't let you brawl. Right. When we were in Cancun last year, Paulie and Gonzalez made his debut on Pro Box TV. He said, basically, not being egocentric, but it's his time now. At 23 years old, it's his time to show that he can be one of the best. And fights that he's had up to this point, 
and even the disappointment in the decision with Lopez have proven to himself that he can get in there and compete at a high level. But that's the thing, you don't usually hear the B-side coming in and saying it's my time. Right. You, gotta, you know, like this, and, and I really wasn't sure what to make of him when we talked to him in that fighter meeting. You know, he had these little glasses on. And that's right. Little, you know, little nerdy little, little look to him. And all of a sudden, this guy gets in there, and man, I was like, this guy can fight. And then tonight again, I mean, he's, he's got some good skills. I mean, now, now he's coming in with pink hair and I was pink trunks. Say, yeah. <laughs> his hair matches his, his trunks. I mean, he's got the outfit going. Mike Goldberg, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri. Wednesday night fights here on your boxing oh. channel. Hey, Southpaw worked there, Chris. Ooh, what a big overhand left. That shook Gonzalez right on the ropes. Nice little uppercut to the gut. Por cierto, señores, por cierto. I turned, I was going to say, that one that was going to say, I thought it turned uh, Rivera back to the right hand stands. That was a nice little uppercut to the gut after that. But a big overhand left by Rivera a few seconds before that. What a shot. And champ, one of the keys of victory that you said for Gonzalez was do not get, let yourself get walked into the ropes. That's exactly what happened there. He got caught with that overhand left. Yeah, if there's one criticism that I noticed uh, even in September was uh, he, he's, he's comfortable off the ropes, and, and you, but you gotta know what you're watching if, 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 if you're gonna understand that he's, he, he's successful off the ropes. I thought he was very effective off the ropes in September, but sometimes you got judges who just watch follow the leader instead of watching a boxing match, and they don't know how to score that kind of fight. But like you said, especially in Mexico. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I, think he, I think he may have learned that because he's not spending as much time off the ropes, but at times, old habits die hard, and, then, and that one, he got hit with a big overhand left when he when walked himself back to the ropes. I think also it's partly that he respects Rivera and respects him and his power. He understands, like you said, these guys have a past. Maybe they've sparred together. He, he knows what he has in front of him, so he's he's staying really on his P's and Q's tonight. Gonzalez is sparred with Louis Pantera Neri, two-time world champion, 33-1, and 25 knockouts, 28-year-old Southpaw. So I suppose if Rivera stays in Southpaw, it's something that Gonzalez has seen in training before. He said he, he, he picked up a lot of gamesmanship from someone who has won world championships taught him not to go forward all the time to look and pick your power punches more efficiently and remember the mental part of the game Ver making some more contact this round though he, yeah he's walking up a little bit snap back with the jab oh good right hand again from Rivera yeah, he's found his range in this in this round. has landed some really, really telling shots. Just missed coming in with that lead left hook. That's his favorite punch. He yep. loves to throw that thing over the top. He scored several knockouts with that from what I've seen in the past. He definitely believes in that shot. He's also stay busy with that jab. When he uses it, he's a, I think he's very effective. And especially when you have a, a guy who's front foot heavy like Rivera, it's easier to hit them with jabs. You know, they're, 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 give, they're kind of putting their heads in front of you. I can remember Roy Jones when he fought John Ruiz in, 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 in a post fight interview with Larry Merchant. He said, you know, how was he be able to be so effective? And Roy just simply said, he's front foot heavy. And I hit him with a jab all night, you know? And I always kept that in mind whenever I would see guys fight on the front foot. Yes, you got to be careful with their hook. Those are, those are hook happy guys. But uh, you can hit them with a lot of jabs if your jab is good. Good start to our main event of the evening from Mexico City. Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions. Good round for Brian Rivera. Yeah, like you said, Goldie, this is a good round for Rivera. It's a nice bounce back round because I had him losing the first two two rounds. But here we see, switching from the southpaw position, he backs Gonzalez up on the ropes, throwing that overhand left as Gonzalez gets tall against the rope. Had nowhere to go, so he got cracked with that shot. Best best punch of the fight so far. Yep. Oh. yep going straight back and staying high, two mistakes. Yep. And he stays southpaw here to start round number four. Oh, so he, he found what, something he that might, yeah, what, what might have been a, a, a panic alert, if you will, seems not to be. Rivera seems very comfortable going from the southpaw stance, Chris. Yeah, I'd never seen that. I, I, I literally thought that he was making a mistake or that he was feeling uncomfortable, but he's, he's made it work really well. He's got a good left hand, and he throws it nicely from that southpaw position. And as Chris mentioned, Paulie, the biggest punch that we've seen in this fight came from Rivera from this stance. Yeah, and he's got a, he's got a, a good 
first step on that from the southpaw position as well. I, I tell you, he's not as front foot heavy as a southpaw stance because he, he's obviously, uh, his power shot is now uh, in the backhand. He, he's probably, I, I'll be honest, I, I'll dare I say he might be a natural southpaw because he's front foot heavy from the right hand stance, love to throw his hook. And now from the left hand stance, he's, you know, he's, he's got a pretty good jab, but he, he likes to fire off that left hand a lot as he goes back to the right hand stance now. You know, Champ, I was thinking the same thing because he's very left hand dominant. I mean, we did speaking of it. Yeah. <laughs> he just yeah. fires three in a row. Oh. Good counter by Gonzalez. We'll pick up some of these patterns. <laughs> nice shot here round, by round. Gonzalez. Good. Oh. Nice. That's what I mean about the timing shots by Canelo Gonzalez. Nice little timing uppercut there uh, off, of, off of the Rivera jet. Oh, over the top. Oh, yeah, that, was, that, that was one of the best punches that I saw when I did my tape review of Gonzalez was his lead left hand, that lead left uppercut, man. He rips that thing up and sometimes will come with the left hook right off that. It's a beautiful combination. Nice little touch to, to the body. Oh, good body there. Rivera disguising the body shots well. Good little setups up top before going to the body two times in a row. Oh, this is a good fight, guys. This is a good fight. <laughs> this is, this is getting going right here. These guys are not shy about giving it to each other. <laughs> Even though these guys have a combined eight losses, they're very good fighters, and they're putting on a great show. They're, they're very hungry. They're pushing the action. They're classy in their movements and, and the way they set things up. This is high-level stuff. Final minute of round number four of our main event of the evening, Wednesday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. Oof. Tough round the score. These guys are very evenly matched here. And, and you do, you have to look at the records of the opponents when you look at the record of the two men that are in there right now. So we've got good fighters and we're getting ourselves a great main event, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's what Pro Box TV is all about. Oh, Gonzalez coming forward again. That's what you think somebody's probably right. around. The other guy comes back. The momentum shifts are incredible in this fight. And that's how calling that fight live in Cancun, I, that's how the rabbit grew on the magic map. As, as you saw the grit and the determination and a little bit of flash and dash, and he just missed with the left uppercut there. I'll tell you what, he won me this round too, but I was on my way to give him Rivera the round, but the last minute just made me switch it to uh, Gonzalez. I got a 3-1. I have a 2-1-1 one, one even. I gave that round as an even round. Not a big fan of even rounds, but I mean, he can't get much more even than that. No, I, I, I like to give even rounds. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I actually don't like when the people say don't give even yeah, rounds. Yeah. I don't think somebody should have to give the give, right. win a round, if, especially with a round where nothing happens. Yeah, exactly. At least this round can sway everything. At least this round a lot happens, but this round where nothing happens, you, like, oh, you got to pick a winner. Like, you ever see the field a lot of rounds with four punches get thrown around? Yeah. I don't want to give somebody a round like that. And a lot of times a fight can be dependent on that round. Yeah. It's definitely not one of those fights where anybody's throwing four punches around. No, no. These guys are landing four punch combinations. This is the left-handedness we were talking about from, from Rivera. He came with three, four left hands, and then in true fashion for this fight, Gonzalez comes right back with a nice sneaky right uppercut to the body and gets Rivera on the way out. And those are just all the subtle clues that uh, uh, Champ Chris Algeri was talking about in terms of letting you know that Rivera is probably a natural sophomore. And you can repeat with the same hand three or four times in a row from different angles. Mm. And there's a nice left hand again, same combination he did yeah. a couple of rounds ago. Gonzalez blocked it a little better this time, but partially landed. But nonetheless, when you see some complicated combinations done with the same hand like that, you can tell that's, that's their dominant hand. Yeah. Rivera sneaking that left in again. He, he is very effective when he switches to the southpaw stance. Finding a home for both hands. Second 10 round fight for 25 year old Brian Rivera and coming off a 10 round unanimous decision victory back in October of last year against previously unbeaten Odin Baez. Sixth time scheduled for 10 rounds for Gonzalez. He has gone the distance in the last four. We are in round number five. Second time on Pro Box TV for Alejandro Gonzalez. Brian Rivera, 11 and three. Gonzalez, 12, five and two. Rivera is essentially a one-handed fighter. He's just clever in that he fights from both stances yeah. and throws it off the lead and the rear. <laughs> And he's pretty effective with that one hand, but you know, you guys gotta be careful. You don't wanna look like too much of a one-trick pony. 
but the change of stances really <laughs> does deceive him, deceive you well. Maybe this is what he meant by being a technical fighter. I didn't I didn't think he had this fold to his game. Right. And he's he's showing it right here. It's also making Gonzalez less active with the jab, just him being on the southpaw stance. Sometimes guys won't be as active when they, with the jab when the when the southpaw stance is in front of them. And Chris, the reason at the very top of our show that we said that Brian Rivera told us that he is now a man on a mission is he had back-to-back six-round unanimous decision losses, then came back in October and won a 10-rounder against a previously unbeaten fighter. So he's coming in on a mission to really get on a roll and push that 11 and three way up the ladder. Oh yeah, I mean, he's he's rejuvenated. Uh, you're coming off two losses back to back. That's a tough place to be in a young career when you've only got a handful of fights. When you beat a, 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 another undefeated guy who is probably supposed to win. Oh, big left hand from Gonzalez. Oh. And up the middle. Oh, and a body shot. Let go, let go. that shot selection. Doesn't get crazy even when he sees a, a moment to pounce. I love the feet here of Gonzalez. He's still planting his feet. He's got good balance. He has good awareness. Great shots, though. I believe it was a left hook that started it. Oh, nice kiss. Loves those uppercuts, too. Main event delivering tonight. Excellent fight. Yeah, well, he's a victory for Brian Rivera. Don't pull straight back with the hands up. He hasn't done that at all tonight. He's been very good at staying composed from either the lefty or the righty stance. Be patient. He's definitely been much more patient tonight, sometimes a little too patient, where I think he could have pushed the action a little more. And then utilizing the jab to the body to set the hook upstairs. He wants to land that hook upstairs. That's his favorite punch. We saw how he's able to switch sides to land that shot. But if he lands from the, from his orthodox position, I think it's actually a harder shot. Yeah, right. I tell you, but when he's in the orthodox position, a lot of times he, sw he switches that uh, left hand to, into hooks using that lead hand. And here's the uh, the keys for uh, Gonzalez: stay busy with the lead hand. I tell you, he's done that. You know, he's he's, he's been very busy with the left hand. Maybe a little bit less when Gonzalez when uh, Rivera goes uh, uh, to the right handed stance. And then um, the other keys we got here: don't allow Rivera to walk into ropes. It's happened at times, but he's he's fought well off the ropes and use lateral movement. I think uh, one thing Gonzalez has done tonight that he that he's done. Oh, Shot by Rivera. One thing he's done better tonight is stay off the ropes. At least he's not been there as often. He's been on the ropes at times, but not as often as he was back in September. I think uh, I think Rivera heard me there. I mentioned that the left hook from the orthodox position is a better punch. He came out this round and landed immediately on the jaw of Gonzalez. All right, we're past the midway point of our main event of the evening. Paulie, give me your scorecard through five. I got a competitive, but I got a 4-1 uh, for uh, Gonzalez. Chris? Um, I got it three. What do I have? I'm sorry. Um, I have it three, two, and one even. A oh, big combination by Gonzalez. That's our three, one, one even. That's fine. That works. That works. Three, one, one. <laughs> I got you. Olympia, Olympia. You know, he knows how to bait you when he's on the He does. But a lot of times, he, he, certain judges won't know how to appreciate that. And of course, there are times where he actually does get hit when he's on the ropes. But a lot of times, he sets little traps while he's on the ropes. That was something that I always worried about during my career. Do the judges see all the fine little things that I'm doing in there? Am I, am I getting credit for the, the sweet science that's in there? Because a lot of times, if you're not landing, if you're not being aggressive, you're not going forward, a judge doesn't see what's going on. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, there are judges that will, may see some of the subtleties. Most of them don't. You know, I tell you, the large majority of them don't. A lot of, a lot of the times, actually, when you're on the ropes and you're in front of a big crowd, they'll just go by the crowd noise. Right, yep. right. And so it'll work against you despite you, your craftiness. Rivera back to southpaw. He came out at the start of this round in the orthodox stance. But pretty much since, I, I, I think it was round two, guys, he's predominantly worked from the southpaw. That's a big body shot landed by the rabbit. Looking for that uppercut again. Nice change up there. See how he took the power off, just let his hands go. Very smart from Gonzalez. Yeah, I tell you, he's a shifty. That, that, sh that shot selection, change of speed, real, real, you know, real thinker in there. Good jab. He really does do a lot of things well, offensively, defensively, counter punching. You know, when he goes into full defense mode. 
I definitely see why you like this guy, partner. And Paulie, do you see improvements from Gonzalez from what we saw in Cancun back in September? Well, one of the things I, I, I mentioned a, uh, a few minutes ago was, you know, he's been all, he hasn't been on the ropes as often. Oh, he seems like he's close to the ropes now. Nice shot there by Rivera. But he hasn't been on the ropes as often uh, this fight. He's, he's been more cognizant of the fact to keep it the center ring or, or uh, oh, nice hook there by Rivera, speaking of fighting off the ropes. Uh, and so I, I, it makes it more appreciate even to the, more, more easy to appreciate even for the layman. Uh, because I think you have to have a set of more complicated eyes to appreciate what he does off the ropes. Good round for both men. Both men landing, very aggressive. Gonzalez with some good combinations. Chris had mentioned earlier that nine of the 11 career wins for El Azteca, Brian Rivera, have been knockout finishes. Gonzalez has been stopped just once. Five losses, stopped just once, and that was all the way back in July of 2019. Round number seven, Rivera in the black and orange trunks, white and pink trunks for Alejandro Gonzalez. Good main event from Mexico City. Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions, Mike Goldberg, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri. Wednesday Night Fights on your boxing channel. Oof, good shot there from Gonzalez to open up round number seven. He's looking very composed, very confident, very smooth at this point of the fight. And his body language never goes up or down. Very stoic with his body language. Never gives his opponent a feel if he's feeling good or not feeling so good about things are going. That's an excellent point. Yeah, he's, he's, he's maintaining status quo. He's going out there just to win the fight, win the rounds. Snuck that jab in. See if Rivera works his way back to Southpaw. Just staying busy with that lead jab. You know, I think something we haven't really touched on yet is, is the focus of Gonzalez. You can see the eyes. He's very tuned in. He's very focused. He knows exactly what he wants to do, and he's executing round after round. That takes true discipline, and that's what boxing is all about. Yeah, it really has a very cognizant of where he's at in the ring at all times. And this thing, his distance, and this, you know, measures his shots very well. His sharp counter there, very good counter punching as well with the left hand from Gonzalez tonight. And he did talk to us in the fighter meetings about the time spent sparring with Pantera, two-time world champion, 33 and one, and working on the mental part of the game. And, and that's what we're seeing, much to your point, Chris, is the discipline and the mental part of the game that Gonzalez is putting on display here in round number seven. He's done it throughout the fight, but we're really seeing him focused, laser focused here in round seven. Yeah, Luis, you're not gonna get much better sparring than that. And you can you can see what's what he learned in those sessions, how to how to stay calm, how to use your eyes, how to box well. This round has been the most impressive to me because he has been so defensively sound while focused in boxing and scoring. Yeah, yeah, he flows his offensive defense very, very well. You can see the confidence he has. He's playing the matador right now. He gives the, the sign of the matador. Uh, look, look at the different looks he gives. See right now he's giving the high guard look. Then he'll give you the, 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 the angle look uh, uh, with, his, with the guard a little bit lower. He'll change his levels up higher and a little lower. You know, he'll fight at close range. He'll fight at long range. Very, very crafty guy. Coming to the final 10 seconds of round number seven. A round in which Rivera never wins Southpaw. Maybe a, a, like a hint of Southpaw on that one. But he stayed in the orthodox stance. 
that a good or bad decision at this point? Because it seems, Paulie, that when he has been effective, it's been with that right foot as his lead foot. I tell you what, when you're confused and we, uh, you're befuddled, it's harder to think. And sometimes you forget to do even the things you may otherwise do well. That's why you need a good corner. Hopefully they're, they're reminding him of some things in the corner because he needs a reminder of certain things right now. And Gonzalez corner probably saying, Chris, keep doing it. More of the same. Oh, if, he, if he could repeat that round over and over again, this is an easy fight to score. He boxed beautifully that round. He used his jab. Like like the champ, Paul Imanaji said, look at all the things that he was doing. He was pulling in and out, side to side, fighting off the ropes. Got a touch there, but for the most part, that round utilized great jabs, what up, what up, what was what up, what up. boxing easily, not getting touched, not getting hit, and just controlling the flow. Fighting at home in Mexico City. Second straight fight at home for Alejandro Gonzalez. We called his fight in Cancun last September. Stop. Round eight of our main event of the evening. The loose tape. This has been a very entertaining main event. 25-year-old Brian Rivera, 23-year-old Alejandro Gonzalez. You know, and, and Rivera's not not boxing poorly. He's 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 fighting a good fight. He's just getting he's getting beat. He's getting outboxed. He's getting out hustled. Taking nothing away from Rivera, but Gonzalez is just on one tonight. Yeah, Rivera is a capable guy. He's being out thought in there. You know, uh, you know, there's just a couple more wrinkles, a couple more dimensions to the to the boxing that Gonzalez brings to the table than, than the boxing that uh, Rivera brings to the table. And, and Paulie, also the platform in which we've created on your boxing channel here at ProBox TV, it allows someone like Alejandro Gonzalez to have a decision that may may have gone the wrong way. It went the way of Lopez back in Cancun, but they can fight now. As Rivera goes back to Southpaw, they can fight and they can be aggressive and not worry about those zeros as much. Go out there and perform and do your best to put on a show for the fans, and that's what it's all about. And hey, Gonzalez is good TV. So if you're good TV, um, and the truly appreciative fans, the truly appreciative networks like Pro Box TV, where we look for good fighters and great fights on your boxing channel, you know, uh, we bring guys like this on. So Gonz uh, Gonzalez is getting his second chance tonight, and I think he's really shining tonight against a good guy. There's a good fighter in front of him. If you're a runner or a hugger or you don't like tough fights, you don't want to be on Pro Box TV, plain and simple. So Araujo is uh, exited out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I think that is, uh, I think that's an accurate statement. Oh, nice hook there by Rivera. Cabeza, oh, 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 and up the middle. Yeah. See, don't get stuck on the ropes. It's not a good place for Gonzalez to be. He, he, he stayed off the ropes for the most part. The only time he's ever been in trouble, the only time he's ever been hit is when he puts his back on the ropes. Guys, I'm noticing a lot of swelling behind the ear. The right ear, you see it sticking out a little bit. So that left, those left hands from Rivera have damaged the ear of Gonzalez. It's it's hard to see, but there's a lot of swelling behind that left, that, that ear, uh, that right ear rather. Looking like he got cauliflower developing. Yeah, it, like within the last seven well, and a half last, rounds. Oh, it's been the last minute, really. Yeah. It's the beginning of this round. I saw, I saw this in the swelling right away, and it's getting, it's getting worse before our eyes. Interesting place to have an injury. Yeah, Sam, how did that happen exactly? <laughs> so if you, yeah, so if the cartilage in your ear is like your nose. You can break it, and what happens is it fills up with blood, and it just pushes out the skin. That's what the swelling is, and eventually that'll harden and, and calcify, and that's why cauliflower ears are so hard to touch. The, the champ Chris Algeri has the educated viewpoints as well. I, I, I didn't go. I didn't go to school as much. <laughs> you, you went to a different school. You I defer. I defer there. Yeah. Medical, medical but, nutrition questions. But, we go my way. But I was curious, yeah. seeing the swelling. Yeah, look at that. And it just developed so fast as, as we were talking. That round right there was a good answer by Rivera, guys. Yeah, yeah. he really needed it. That was the best round of his in, in, in quite a while. Now, if you're Leslie Smith against Chris Cyborg, the explosion of the cauliflower ear 
is something that she's going to be known for her entire life. Yeah, with those smaller gloves and and you know the, the harder padding on that, it's a lot more common. Also, you have like you have that shearing force of getting your you know pulled in a headlock or whatever. You, you don't have that as much in boxing, um, but that you know that swelling is, is pretty significant. Are they, with their hand fingers, can they pull your ear? No. <laughs> and I, I don't think can it's you do legal, but they can might. You, you yeah, yeah no, that was bad when I was a kid. My mom used to pull my ear sometimes. You know, so can they pull your ear in the in the uh, in the ground fighting in the MMA? Well, I, I will tell you what. Thing. Working with Randy Couture, who has those cauliflower ears, the most difficult part of the broadcast for Randy was trying to get an earpiece in. <laughs> because the cauliflower ear, there's nowhere. Good left hook there from Rivera. Rivera's answered after the biggest round that you guys agree mm -hmm. was put forth by Gonzalez. Rivera answers in the eighth, comes out hot here in the ninth. You know, and, and we, we spoke about the, the, the vaunted power of, of Rivera, and you know, we haven't really seen him hurt Gonzalez, but I mean, thinking about that ear swelling, obviously the power's there. It, you know, it's, it's having an effect, maybe not so much in terms of hurting Gonzalez, but it's doing damage to his skin. Updated scorecard, Magic Man? I got it 6-2. I had, uh, you know, Gonzalez kind of taking a lot of, a lot of good rounds there where the action was good, but I just thought, thought Gonzalez was better, but I give the last round to Rivera, and uh, let's see if he can continue to get the momentum. On my card, he's going to lead at least a knockdown. So you were 3 1 and 1 through 5. Where are we now, Chris? I got 78 75 for Gonzalez with two rounds to go. Yeah, and, and I agree, he's going to need a knockdown in order to, uh, to salvage this fight without a loss. Ooh, good body shot there from Rivera. Nice dig on the way out. That left hand's going to have to work overtime if he's going to make up this lost ground. He has stayed orthodox the last few rounds. Gonzalez keeping those hands out. Big swing and a miss. Midway point around nine. Gonzalez being smart, even though he's not being as explosive as he was earlier rounds, he's staying busy with that left hand, just putting it out there. Jabs, hook, jab, hook. Eyes open, good, smart defense. Touch, touch, touch. You know, it's keeping Rivera busy. And when you're being kept busy, you can't focus as much on setting up your own opponent, setting up your opponent for, uh, for a little trap you want to set. Yeah, those jabs got the nose of Rivera bleeding quite a bit the last two rounds. Nice little one-two there as well. Second 10-rounder for Rivera. As we are in round nine, sixth time scheduled for 10 for Gonzalez. Gone the distance, the full 10 in the last four. Again with the shot selection from, from Gonzalez. He does a great job of mixing up those punches, too. You know, he never gets into a, a rhythm of any kind of offensive combination. He mixes it up so well. Whereas Rivera, you kind of know what he's looking for. Yeah. He's looking for the left hand. Yeah, he, he does throw from various angles, but he's very left hand happy. Eventually, um, after several different rounds, a, a good fighter starts to catch on to it. I love seeing a guy like Gonzalez. He's got five losses, but he can really fight. He is a he is he's got a high level, good boxing IQ. You know, he'd be written off if you just look at the numbers, but when you look beyond that, this this kid can really fight. Beautiful Mexico City, Mexico. Tonight we come to you from Auditorio Blackberry in Mexico City, courtesy of one of our founders, Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions, our main event of the evening here on Pro Box TV's Wednesday Night Fights. Brian Rivera, 11 and three. Alejandro Gonzalez on Pro Box TV for the second time in his professional career. Rivera, nine of his 11 wins by knockout. Gonzalez looking to make it two straight after losing on Pro Box TV in Cancun. Mike Goldberg, the Magic Man, Pauli Malignaggi, the two-time world champion, former world champion Chris Algieri, 10th and final round. Three minutes remain. Seems like a little extra bounce in Rivera's step. He, I believe he knows he's behind. He's going to need something big in this last round. Let's see if he goes for it. 
I wonder if he'll go southpaw again. He hasn't gone. I wonder if he told him in the corner not to. It's, it's really strange because he had some good success in that southpaw stance. I would say he had more exactly. success from the southpaw stance than he has had from the orthodox stance. Oh, I'd have to agree entirely. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's where he got all the big shots that he landed tonight were from that southpaw stance, especially while Gonzalez was on the ropes. And he's abandoned it the last three rounds, so it may have been something that was said in the corner, Pauly. Oh, a nice combination by Gonzalez again. Mm. Oh, sharp punch, too. Oh, good uppercut. And then that got Rivera right off. Gonzalez. And an answer from Rivera with the left uppercut. With a swollen right ear. But he's still throwing. Now we got Gonzalez from the southpaw. They're both the southpaw stances now. Yes. It's a brand new fight. Oh, good overhand left okay, again. There it is. <laughs> That's the big punch yeah. that he's landed from that southpaw stance. Goldie, I think you should be in the corner next fight for, for Rivera. <laughs> you, tell him to go southpaw. Ooh, oh, nice counter. Nice. Oh, nice. Feed him to the punch. Good answer from Rivera. Oh. How else could this fight end? Both yeah. these guys got to go yeah. back and forth. They have oh. definitely entertained oh. here in our main event. And that's the one, the one hand sweetness of Triple. Rivera tripling it up, three different angles of punches. Oh, what in that corner, in that red corner, they both guys slipped there. It can be dangerous in a fight like this, but both guys are throwing heavy leather, even in the 10th round. Pro Box TV main events are going to be like this, we hope, every other Wednesday. Southpaw Rivera in the last 47 mm. seconds. Again, he lands that punch. Oof. Unanswered by the rabbit. Yeah, Gonzalez countered him very sharply, and then I think he saw he got Rivera's attention and then followed her up. That's something that I think that Gonzalez probably could have done more tonight, is follow up when he did catch and counter Rivera. That's the one thing when you have, you know, four or five losses. Sometimes you get a little bit, of, a little bit of that opponent mentality, you know, where you're you're not as used to, you know, completely taking full control of a fight. Oh, oh by Rivera! I'll tell you, ah, tell you, we, we came in. Sam Rivera was a puncher tonight. Gonzalez definitely showed a chin. A nice big hook there by Rivera again. Yeah, because that was a shot that Gonzalez didn't see, and he still ate it. Oh, great main event of the evening. They go the distance. Ryan Rivera and Alejandro Gonzalez. That fight had a little bit of everything. It really did. It had boxing, it had punching, it was competitive, it was back and forth. Uh, we saw righty southpaws, we saw, we saw it all. It was fight. Nice, nice technical boxing as well. Yep. It was one of those action fights, but it, it, it was a, a, a quality action fight. And it's fun to watch someone like Alejandro Gonzalez evolve here on Pro Box TV. Recover in the fight back in November, finishing his opponent in the fourth, coming off the tough night, the decision that did not go his way against Christopher Lopez. And then tonight, Paulie, as you talked about, you see the growth in the 23-year-old. Yeah, so speaking of growing the ears, growth coming down. Yeah, it's a, speaking of growth, <laughs> growth behind that right ear, geez. I don't think you can get, well, you can get the cauliflower on the back, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you're a true wrestler, oh, that's a badge blue. of honor. You don't get a drink. It's all black and blue there. Look at that. It's like there's an ear inside it, in, on the back of his ear. There's another ear. A lot of bleeding going on back there. You got, you definitely, you, what happens is you break that cartilage. Oof. Yeah. Oof, you break that soft tissue, and that just fills up with blood. Yeah, it's all black and blue. That is, I tell you, that's... Now, you, you said, Goldie, you can leave it, it'll eventually harden up and stay like that, or you get it drained, yeah. which is very painful. <laughs> so I wrestled in high school. A lot of people don't know that. I was that was a pretty high-level wrestler in high school. I had cauliflower in both my ears, and I had surgery to remove it. Wow. Because I didn't want to live my life with my ears like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a boxer, not a, not a wrestler, <laughs> not a jujitsu guy. I want my ears. See, that's why you can put the IFB in very easily, Chris. That was, that was smart. That was yeah. smart on your post-boxing as well. 
Rivera Gonzalez. Both showing love to the crowd. Gonzalez from Mexico City. Fighting at home here tonight on Pro Box TV. And there is the Hall of Famer, our own Juan Manuel Marquez. Rafael Marquez with him. And Chiquita Gonzalez, Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez, one of the best little men ever. Had a great trilogy with uh, Michael Carbajal. That's royalty right there, guys. I think Chiquita and the Carl Carbo had the first million dollar fight between uh, the flyweights or, or the smaller weight classes. They, they went at it, man. Judges have rendered their decision. Is it Gonzalez or Rivera who will get their arm raised? Let's get it to Marlon Perez. Damas y caballeros, su atención, por favor, tenemos la puntuación de esta pelea. No sin antes, vamos a dar un fuerte aplauso, por favor, para ambos peleadores. Si son tan amables. Damas y caballeros, después de 10 rounds de pelea, tenemos la puntuación de los jueces. Humberto Olivares otorgó 93 a 97. Héctor Mendiola, 92-98. Julio Ortega, 94-96. Damas y caballeros, el vencedor de esta pelea por decisión unánime, Alejandro Conejo Díaz. Un aplauso fuerte para el vencedor de este encuentro. Marquez Promotion, Juan Manuel Márquez nos acompaña. Humberto Chiquita González, Rafa Márquez nos acompaña en este acto. El presidente de la Comisión de Boxe de la Ciudad de México, Ciro Nuzzi, se unen en este acto para felicitar al vencedor de este encuentro, Alejandro Conejo Díaz. En esos momentos es felicitado por Juan Manuel Márquez, Dinamita Márquez, Rafa Márquez, Humberto Chiquita González, el presidente de la Comisión de Boxe de la Ciudad de México, Don Ciro Nuzzi, felicita al vencedor, Alejandro Conejo Díaz. Y ese aplauso lo reiteramos para nuestras grandes figuras que hoy nos acompañan, Juan Manuel Dinamita Márquez, el aplauso fuerte para nuestro gran campeón, Humberto Chiquita González, Rafa Márquez. Está con nosotros el presidente de la comisión, Ciro Nuzzi. Señoras, señores, nuevamente felicitamos al vencedor, el Conejo Díaz. Tell you what's interesting. Gonzalez is like Ronnie Dangerfield. He can't get respect when he, when he gets robbed or when or they call him by a different name when he wins. A nice highlight package here. Gonzalez with a nice shot selection as he backed up Rivera on the ropes in the first round. Yeah, and then we see when uh, Rivera went southpaw, he was able to land that left hand over the top, especially when he had Gonzalez on the ropes. There we saw Gonzalez actually fighting really well off the ropes. Yeah, and then good back and forth action. But you know what? Uh, both guys showed that they were class quality, but at the end of the day, it was just a little bit more each round by Gonzalez. And the right guy wins the fight. And then some nice shots there as uh, Gonzalez laid on the ropes. But also solid defense there as well. Very crafty. You see him doing the, the, the sign of the matador there too to uh, Rivera, and that might have been one of the shots that may have caused uh, some of that cauliflower ear on the back of Alejandro Gonzalez's ear. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I think, Champ, it really, it, it was a good one-handed fighter versus a good two-handed fighter. All yeah. night long, uh, uh, Gonzalez was just a little bit better. Rivera was really just looking for the left hand, the left hook high, doubling it, tripling it up at times, having some success, but two versus one, two's gonna win, and Gonzalez won. And I'll tell you what, Gonzalez gets the win, the ring announcer said his name wrong four or five times. Maybe, maybe we'll learn the name before we have him talk to say that. All right, well, they, they do have a lot of names in Mexico <laughs> and, and in Brazil. I mean, it's, it's it goes on and on and on and on. I didn't you know, say it. I, I know, but yeah, there's a Diaz probably in the family. There's no question about it. But the thing that we saw tonight 
was the rabbit in that confidence and that mental game. And Chris, you brought up a great point. And both you and Paulie talked about it, how mentally he was focused and that never wavered at all. Absolutely dialed in all night long, round after round, even when he had a bad round. Like you said, even when he was having a, a, a tough round or, or getting hit with a good shot, he didn't show it. It didn't change his demeanor at all. He was totally focused on winning the fight. He had his game plan and he executed round after round. Excellent performance from tonight from Gonzalez. And even though the, the official didn't get his, his name right, he got his hand raised and that's really what matters. Yeah, and yeah, do you rather have your name raised? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather my, hand, my, name, my name said wrong and my hand raised than the, than the vice versa. Very true, and, and Pauly, should Rivera, I mean, in, you know, hindsight now, but should Rivera have stayed in that southpaw stance? It's one of the things we're going to be wondering. It's one of the things he's going to be wondering. And, of course, you know, we wonder also if he got the instructions in the corner to maybe not go back to the southpaw stance. You know, it's one of those things that's definitely going to be a talking point in the, in, in the Rivera team for sure because, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Champ Chris said, you know, uh, Gonzalez was very dialed in. He was focused every second of every round. And he was just a little bit better every round. And it is that left hand that was the effect effective hand, which is why Rivera finished the stance and switched from southpaw back to orthodox, had more success from the southpaw stance, and I think you put it in, in great perspective, Chris. It, you know, one guy was good with one hand, the other guy was good with two hands, Polly. Yeah, and, and, and really, it, it wasn't so much that he had more success with one, with one stance than the other, because I think he won basically one round with each stance. It's just he lost a lot more rounds in the right-handed stance, yeah. and I felt in the percentage-wise, in the time he spent in the southpaw stance, percentage-wise, I thought he had more success in the time he was in the southpaw stance. And it's good to see a guy like Gonzalez have success after what we saw in Cancun with Christopher Lopez. So, you know, go back to your careers and, and rebounding from disappointment. It's not what happens to the man, Chris. It's what the man does when it happens to him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he, he still is a young, he's a young yeah. guy. He still has a long career. Old. Exactly. Both these guys are young. The whole card tonight was young. So there's a lot of upside for all of them. They can all bounce back. And that's really what we saw tonight. I mean, Gonzalez has five losses. And he was the man tonight. So uh, th there is future for these guys. And a future for Brian Rivera. Yeah, Rivera was very capable. You know, this was two hard luck guys. They just said, you know what? If we got hard luck against all the other prospects. We're just going to get in with, with each other and, and put on a good fight. And that's exactly what they did. Very, very entertaining. A Pro Box TV main event delivered tonight. Good fighters give us a great fight and a great main event and congratulations to Alejandro Gonzalez winner by unanimous decision Wednesday night we are right here every other Wednesday February 22nd we will be inside the Pro Box TV event center where we are tonight live for Wednesday night fights in our main event all action Mexican Manuel Gallegos 19-1 record 16 wins by knockout takes on the vibes Richard Van Sicklin is back he carries a record of 13 and 0. Plus, Najee Lopez returns. Marcus Baye and our other future star, 2020 Olympian, Daryl Blast Valse. That is live on Pro Box TV, February 22nd. We don't promote boxers, we promote the sport of boxing. And tonight it all came to you from Mexico City, Mexico. Started out with Lopez and a shot that ended the fight, and it is his night, and a good win goes to Estrada. Then, well, like Paulie said, it wasn't a great showing for Araujo, but it was a good showing for the victor, and that man stole the show as Gonzalez victorious in our main event of the evening. For Chris Algieri and Paulie Malinaji, Mike Colbert, saying so long until we see you in two weeks.